Hey guys, <coughs> get my voice going. Hi, Cheryl. How y'all doing? Happy Marvelous Monday, as Julie would say. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Hope you had a good weekend. Hi, Magic, Elaine, Melinda. Let me get my, make sure my, what do you call it? Microphone is this away. I got a whole bunch of stuff on the table. I got the tables full. So, hi, Jerry, Nashua, Joe. Everybody coming in? Hello. Good morning. So, yeah. Did you get that? Yes, we did. I have, um, Aunt Beck, I've been awake since 3 o'clock this morning. I've been up since 3. 3. <laughs> because of the weather. It wakes you up, you know, storms, tornado warnings, you know, they wake you up. So I've been awake since three, but we didn't get any damage here. Um, Hopster's already gone out to, uh, he, you know, he's, he has shifts at work. They swap off so that only one person is going at a time. And uh, so anyway, his shift is this morning. So when he comes back, he'll let me know what the town looks like. Well, he doesn't really go through the town, but. You know, he'll let me know how, how it looked. But, yeah. But, yeah, it came through. <coughs> but we're fine. We're fine. Yeah, yeah. South Carolina, yeah. So, um, I didn't hear the, I didn't hear the sirens, but I did, you know, we did have the weather app, you know. So, um, hi, Gary. Let's see, Teresa. Yeah, you know, last, well, week before last, wasn't we had a windstorm come through and broke a lot of limbs around the neighbor, the neighborhood and some trees were down the neighborhood. But this wasn't as bad as far as the wind. The wind didn't um, come through as bad as it did that couple of weeks ago. Yeah, so we're, uh, we're safe here. Hi, Janet. But it did wake me up at 3 o'clock in the morning. So I've been awake since 3. So I got in here and started working. I've <laughs> been working in here. I watched some of Mary's this morning. I didn't chat on Mary's. But I watched some of Mary's this morning and watched some of the recordings overnight. Got some projects going. I got some, you know, I'm going to make some traveler's notebooks out of stacks. So, um, yeah, so I've been working in here for quite a couple of hours. Hi, John, a preppy crafty girl. I got one of John's kits to show you guys. Um, <clears throat> hi, Ian. So I got to get my voice going. Hubster's already gone, so I'm not, haven't been talking. So uh, he, he went in for his shift. Well, he has to go in and check mail. He's HR, so he has to make sure everybody gets unemployment, insurance, all that, right? So. I guess that would be considered essential. <laughs> it would be if it was me. It would be essential if it was me. Hi, Julie Topaz. Happy Marvelous Monday to you, too. Oh, it's beautiful here now. It's all cleared up. It's a nice, cool breeze, sunny. It's all gone. It's all gone through. So uh, I'm not sure what the temperature is, but it's not. I got all the windows open. I got my fan on, which I should probably get it off my face because it makes you sound like, you know, when you're talking in a fan. <laughs> Let me turn it just a little. There we go. Let's see what the temperature is. Oh, I'm rolling over cat toys. Where are they? I hear them because I hear, I hear them squeaking, but I can't. There, there is it. I'm rolling over one and I can't. Oh, there it is. <laughs> rolling over cat toys under my chair let's see it's 61 61 sunny cool yeah since the storm came through i think it's supposed to be nice all week so i'm gonna get some walks in this week boy i gotta get back into my habit of walking a mile every day so i got to get back into that um we had rain for like a couple of weeks and uh, you know so much going on I got out of the habit of doing it every single day, unless it's raining. So I got to get back into my mile a day. Um, let's see. Um, yeah. Here too, Aunt Beck. 
Let's see. Okay, Ian. Kimberly, Mitzi, Ray, Kayla, Carolyn. I'm looking down the Molly. I know I probably missed. Did I say hi to you, Janet? <laughs> Sorry, Janet. Janet and I talk on the phone. And I go, oh, I didn't even say good morning to you. <laughs> Sorry, Janet. Uh, Lydia. Um, so anyway, I have a couple different projects. I got some show and tell. And I don't want to forget because I forgot um, last week to read out of this book. So I'm going to try to prop it up right there and try to remember to read out of it this week. <coughs> Let me get a sip of coffee here and get my voice going. So yeah, so I've been up since three. So I'm going to be ready for a nap after Janet's show. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, okay, I did. Oh Yeah. So, yeah, the storm woke me up at three. Hi, Michelle. I know I'm probably missing people. Thank you, everybody, for stopping in. Thanks for the thumbs up already. I did tweet already. So <clears throat> here's what I got planned. A couple things. First off, I thought about doing, and this is just for me. Nobody has to do this with me. I still, I'm still working on my uh, Egyptian hieroglyph uh, composition book. I am working on it. Um, not as much as I probably should, but you know, hey, I throw the ideas out there. You can use them or not. And then we, you know, we keep coming up with new ones. That's why we have a society of idea collectors around here because we collect ideas. So, um, yeah, we had that at three in the morning, Pamela. Where are you? Do you want to say what state you're in, Pamela? Um, Karina, I know I'm missing people coming in. So this is just, I have these big sheets of paper. You could use a sketchbook for this idea. You could use a sketchbook. You could use big pieces of paper. I, I, I hope we're not having issues with connectivity, but uh, you know, um, how are we doing? Are we buffering? Are we okay? Hi, Jersey, Tanya, Nanette, Rain, Elaine. <laughs> I'm trying to say hi to everybody. It is buffering Pacola. Hi, Pacola. So I don't know if it had to do with the storm coming through or what. I, I never know. You never know, right? You just never know what it is. <laughs> you just never know. You just keep rolling along. It could be because there's so many people online, you know. So we're going to just keep rolling. So anyway, my idea for this was to have kind of big sheets of paper, whether that's in a scrapbook, um, not a scrapbook, a sketchbook, or a, you know, big sheets of paper just folded up, you know, poster board kind of side, just have something kind of big. And this would be something fun for the kids to do too, I think. Um, and you just do little, little vignettes. You work on little vignettes. And that's why I call it Little Thoughts, Big Ideas. Because you can work on it like, here, I did another, I just painted another page or two here. Um, just have something, called, you know, just a little ink. It doesn't have to be like this much. It could be like this much, right? And then just do a little something, a little sketch, a little drawing, a little... You know, like this is one of the things John has sent me. You could have her on here. You could write a, it could be a little notes, you know. But the idea is not to make it necessarily a giant journal, which you could do that too. But the idea is more to have it like, you know, just little areas. Like you could have a little, little thought here. Like, you know, you could have her here. Where do I want her though? And then you could have a thought bubble here. <laughs> you know? And then down here, you might have some flowers and a little note about your garden. You could have, it could just be whatever. And so the idea is just to have all these little thoughts, right? Just little thoughts. And I could write that on here too. Let me get my pen. Let me get a, let me get a, uh, uh, what do you call it? A, uh, what are these called again? Super tips. <laughs> Super tips. And you could just write, and I'm going to go outside of it, but like this, you know, like. And 
and um, and just kind of have little areas, little vignettes. Like this. You know, something like this. Just just so that, yeah, she does look good there. I'm going to have to glue her on there. Um, I'll trim her down a little bit. She has a little, she has a little issue with her shoe. <laughs> I'll trim the her, trim her down a little bit. But anyway, and so that then you could just do other things. You could write, you know, whatever. I'm not even going to tell you what to write because it could be of it. I just stuck a leaf on there, um, and a and a big paper clip to hold it shut. But you could do <laughs> Lady Jan. Uh, Orla, let's see who else. So anyway, and then just have a like a little folder of this. It could be folder. Go up your pages, and I haven't done anything like this with all this. Show you the next time, but I think I am going to put this girl right there on this, and this can be another. You know, this could be another signature, or it could just go inside of this one. You know, I just folded a bunch of papers, so I have. Um, I just have a bunch folded there. So anyway, stuff like that. So that's the, that's why I call this Little Thoughts Big Ideas because that's exactly what it is. Doesn't that sound fun? Okay, the other fun thing I'm going to do today, this is what we're going to do today. I, I love my scrapbook papers, my pads, my stacks. I buy them all the time. And I don't scrapbook anymore. I still use bits of paper and torn bits and, you know, for my collage, you know. And in case y'all didn't see it, where's my phone? I did post it on Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, go over to Instagram if you want to see it better. But um, over the weekend, I worked on organizing all my collage fodder, bins and bins and bins of collage fodder. So I did work on that over the weekend. I don't know why Instagram is so slow. to. I think it's my phone. I need a new phone. Um, <clears throat> so I worked on all my collage fodder over the weekend. And so here's some of the pictures of my collage fodder. I got three pictures here. So I organized all this over the weekend and I did get it pretty much done. I actually got all that <laughs> organized into different uh, categories. If you will, I don't do well. And I've talked about this before. I used to have the, um, I used to have the drawer. Yeah, well, I still have the drawers, but I use them for other things. Okay. Um, those little like Michael's different color drawers. And then I have a set of the, just the gray clear ones. And I used to organize all my collage fodder by subject. Like there's what, 12 drawers. I am looking over there, 12 drawers, I think in a stack. And I had it all broke out by, uh, mechanics and clocks, people, florals, whatever else. I had them all broke out like that and organized, but I wasn't using it. And then I found that I wasn't, then if I found, had a magazine, I tore something out. I had no desire to go over there and try to file it, try to file it in a drawer. I was not using it. I got this, my little cuff thing here. It needs to be, needs to be buttoned up here. Uh, it, uh, so I wasn't using it. So what I did is I took all those drawers and dumped them in those big bins, those big plastic tubs. And you've seen me haul them up here before. Those big plastic tubs. I just literally dumped all the drawers, all of them, into those big plastic tubs. And then and I started using it. I would dig through those bins and I'd use it for my collage and I'd use it and use it and use it and use it. <laughs> But I wasn't using it when it was very organized. But at the same time, I've now had got to the point where I had too many bids. I had, oh, I, I don't even know how many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know. Eight bins, um, <laughs> different sizes, some smaller, some of the big, big ones. So anyway, um, this last weekend from those pictures you saw, what I did is I went through and I... I organized it somewhat. 
So I put like, I found like all my watches and clocks are now in two file folders. All my large sheet magazine cut tear outs are in one bin, all the large ones. All the smaller magazine tear outs are in another bin. All my little ephemera, little, you know, anything like this kind of little stuff, that's in two other bins. So it's not completely organized. It's not by topic or subject. I did dig out all my tissue paper, my, um, what do you call it? You know, any kind of specialty papers, tissue papers, any kind of thin wrapping papers, Japanese papers, any kind of specialty papers, they have their own. Um, old book pages, music paper. I don't have a lot of vintage like this stuff that uh, Sister Woman Jonna sent me, which I'm going to show y'all here in a minute. I don't have a lot of this vintagey stuff. Now, she did include a couple other things that I don't think are in her kits, like this, um, <laughs> like this sock monkey ribbon. She just, I think, gave me some of this and a couple of other things. But um, I don't have a lot of that vintage stuff. Like Jonna gets this stuff at flea markets. If you have not ever bought one of her kits, you are in for a surprise. Her kits are vintagey amazing. So I would highly recommend, and she hasn't broke out by different ones. I don't know if she has any more of those faith kits. She had some faith kits that she was selling a class along with it. Um, this is one of the spring kits. She has different kits, and that's all packaged so nice. So if you want... Um, you know, one of her kits, go over to the, uh, let me see exactly what it's called again, Cra um, Preppy Crafty Girl on Etsy. And if, um, what you call it, if uh, Pacola has a link, she can put that in. But anyway, yeah, <laughs> Julie says I use the method of sorting, so, uh, sorting her fodder. Yeah, that's all I'm sorry. Well, mine was at that point. But then I got to the point where I had like my watches and mechanics in so many different bins that I wasn't using them. So at least now they are in together and they're in a, they're in a house. They're at least in the same house. They're not necessarily in the same room, but they're in the same house. <laughs> they're no longer social distancing. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Sorry, gotta laugh. Uh, so anyway, my fodder is um, kind of sort of organized in the sense. Now, my other craft stuff is out on shelves. I've shown y'all a, a quick tour of the room. I don't have a lot of boxes, bins. I have a few. Uh, I have some plastic drawers that I can see through, but I have to see it out. My shelves, if you walked in here, it's like, OMG. Because everything's out on shelves, the books, the notebooks, the pens, the inks, the everything is out on shelves, right? Because if I don't see it, I don't use it. So that's my method. But I do have like with like. All my inks are together. All my paints are together. All my markers are together. Everything is like with like. And I can find everything that way. I have no problem usually. I mean, there's might be a couple of little things here and there. Like one day I couldn't find my brayer. But, you know, uh, for the most part, it's like with like and I can find everything. But it ha I have to be able to access it quickly and easily. I'm on, you know, I'm going like this and, you know, I, I don't have time to dig around in a little drawer. I just, I, I know myself. I won't do it, right? <laughs> Thank you, Pacola. So anyway, I'm going to show you this little, little kit here. And again, I think she threw in a couple other extra things for me. We, I'm sending her some stuff too, um, which went out, some went out in the mail uh, Friday or sa Saturday and another, those flowers that I told her I would send. And then I sent her, I did come across some vintage wrapping paper. I think it's wrap, vintage wrapping paper. It looks old, like old wrapping paper. Uh, so I sent you some of that, John, and... Um, yeah, but I got pretty much all my collage fodder fairly organized, even though, like I said, anything little is in bins. They're in their own bins, but they're all just thrown in there. Like, let me show you an example. So if I want something little, look, it's in here. 
<laughs> it's not, it's not in little bags and little, you know, it's all in here, but it's little. So I got a couple of these bins that have tinier stuff in it. And then I've got the larger stuff in larger bins. Okay. So that being said, I got that organized over the weekend. Uh, what else did I do? Um, so, and I've been working a little here, journaling on this and that. Uh, I am going to add a lot of my vintage stuff into my Jane journal. This is my um, swatching book and all. It's just kind of like my, it's a, my little everything book. This is my everything book. And um, some of John's other kits are in here. And I've got my swatches in here. Got, look, little Valentine. And this is kind of can be used in the same way that I just showed this. These little thoughts, these little big ideas, little thought kind of thing. If you don't want to do something this big, then think about putting it in a notebook. Because this is kind of the same idea. Okay, so if you can glue things in here you like and then write and journal and doodle and draw. And I've got every one of these has flip outs and fold outs. And, and so you can you can continually add to a journal, I mean, to a notebook like this, right? You can just continually add to this and keep writing. And then I've also got my uh, Jane Davenport, the small book that has her book of prompts. So the prompts are on the back. So, or you can just, you know, there's all kinds of prompts out there. This could be, you could put your lists in here, your prompts in here. And, uh, <laughs> Donna, uh, you can put your list in here, your prompts in here, just write them down. And then you have a place just if you don't know what to do, go in here, you'll get inspired. You'll get inspired through your um, book of just just stuff, you know, and it can and but it's also my swatch book. So I've got my swatches in here. Um and flips and fold outs. Now I will say, and I said this before, when I put this together, a lot of these pages are all, it started out in a sketchbook, right? And I deconstructed the sketchbook. But when you go to punch holes in those sketchbook papers, almost every one of these are, you can't see it, but there's white reinforcers. Some of them have color reinforcers on them, but they all have reinforcers on them. Because when you're flipping through a big honking book like this, it's going to tear your pages out if you're not, um, if you're not, uh, if they're not reinforced. So all these pages have reinforcers on them, or most of them do anyway. So you can do a small, uh, little thoughts, big ideas journal like in this, where you just continuously add and play and cut and paste. So it doesn't have to be a purpose. It can just be an all-purpose. It can be an all-purpose journal, right? So then, let me put this little pieces of scrap things that are falling there. But what I want to do after I show uh, this kit from Jonna, I want to um, show you what we're going to do today. So we all have these stacks, right? And here's the one I've just, you'll see me have cut up here. We all have these hot buys, Michaels, Hobby Lobby, Joann's, we all have these stacks. And you might use a page or two. And since I don't scrapbook 12 by 12 anymore, and I really don't scrapbook at all. I mean, I've done a couple pages here and there for samples for you guys, but I really don't scrapbook. Haven't really scrapbooked for about 10 years, but uh, in any in any serious way. <clears throat> but uh, so I thought, well, let's do something with all these stacks we buy. And we all love our traveler's notebooks. And this is nothing new. Everybody knows you can use scrapbook paper to make your traveler's notebooks, right? But what I'm going to do, hi, Lizbeth. I know I'm missing people. Come in, Kathy B. Um, put it in caps if you're talking to me, guys, and I still might miss you. Karen, thanks, guys, for the thumbs up. Thanks for stopping in. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting in the, the, the standard size. I did measure a couple different ones. The standard size of a traveler's notebook pay, uh, paper page is eight and a quarter 
by eight and a half. The eight and a half is this way, and the eight and a quarter is this way. Okay, so when you cut your paint your squares, you have to cut them eight and a quarter and eight and a half. You don't have to, you can cut them however size you want, right? But that's that's the standard size. And I measured two different ones, although I do have a couple others that were specialty travelers that are smaller. There's different sizes. You can also, if you want, you can round the corners. I have a corner chomper, one of those uh, crocodile corner chompers. You can round the corners if you want on them. Um, I'm not doing that at this time, but I just want to tell you that you can do that. So you just take and you make sure you're going the right way. Now you want the you want the you want the larger one to be the way you fold it, right? So you just fold your after you cut them, and I have a, one of those uh, you know guillotine cutters. You just cut it, then use your bone folder and fold it down. So there's there's a, it, one of the pages. What you can do is you can put a bunch of them together, like I don't know. If you put more than, say, six together or eight, they're going to start feather um, flowing out. Doesn't bother me, but if you don't want it to flow out, um, like, I don't want to say feather out, but they're going to start sticking out. The more you get, the farther they're going to stick out. So you have to be aware of that. You can always trim it if you're real... Um, yeah, it is, Donna. You can always trim it if you if they start to bother you. So then, and I don't even worry about uh, stapling, binding. If I do want to, if, if it gets to be kind of thick and I want it uh, like to, you know, in the travelers, then I'll use some of the elastic cording that you get for beading. The, the elastic string you get it's over in the beading departments of the stores or you just get it on Amazon these days right now but I'm not even going to worry about that I'm going to put them together and then here I pulled one I emptied one of my Jane books but then what I what I'm going to do is after I get 10 15 however many sheets you want right then I'll just put I'll just do this and I won't even do I don't even, I won't even, uh, what do you call it? Uh, staple it or separate it, you know, separate the, uh, what do you call it? Attach it in any other way, except just like this. Now, what's nice about when you do it like this is now I've got all this extra papers. This is what's left off this. This is what's left off of when you cut one down. This is what you have left. Now, I don't have the sheet right there. We go. When you cut down this and this is the leftovers off of a 12 by 12 okay hi katrina anybody else i missed so when you cut down one of these little squares to eight and a quarter by eight and a half this is how much you got left now i have other plans for this but here's what you can do you can take one of these fold this in half as well and let's just say you want to fold you could fold it the other way you could have it facing okay have it facing but anyway you can use these and put these in there as well okay so you can still use the the this as part of your journaling or as part of your traveler's notebook so uh, you know do it a little neater i just kind of quickly flapped it there but so you can have things like that so whenever you put them together you can use some of those extras all right so I just have, th this is starting to kind of fold up because I have extra bands sitting in here. Um, so anyway, um, that's an option. <clears throat> Let's see. Let's see if you have any questions, put them in caps. Okay, so we're going to cut up a bunch of these. I'm going to just show you. I'll, I'm going to cut down a stack or two, and I'm going to show you how I do that. I did plan on wanting to give some of these away, but I'm not going to do it right now with the post office and all that, you know. I, I'm just not going to do it at this time, you know, having to make trips to the post office and stuff. But I'm going to make quite a few of these. So after, uh, you know, things settle down, I'll have some of these to give away and um, in different stacks. Now, here's another option you can do. This one in particular, like I showed you this stack right here, it also came with cut-aparts. It came with these cut-aparts. It came with these cut-aparts, right? So you can use all these different elements 
in one of the well in in them as well like i had one here where's the one that i started writing i'm not writing in but well i don't know where i caught it i don't know i had one i drew some lines in oh here it is okay i think it is Do i see it there no where's the one i drew lines in well i had one here i'll just have to do another one i had one where it was folded and i drew lines and i stuck some stuff in it now i can't find it I must have swept it away with something else. <laughs> I guess I swept it away with something else. But what I wanted to show you is you can do this. You can do this with them. I'm really kind of, that's weird. It was just right here, I thought. Oh, here it is. Okay. So this is a sticker from one of these, you know, and they have all these kind of, you have your stickers, your chipboard, you got washi tape and all different types of accoutrements that you can add to these um, type of, you know, traveler's notebooks. That's a sticker. But look, I just hand drew line, put a couple stickers in there. So as you're stacking them up, you can also go in here and let's just take a pit pen here. And you can do it in black. You can do it in colors. You can do it in whatever. Now, where's my pen? Hey, where's that pen? I had a medium size pen. Where'd it go? I don't know. I don't know where it went. So you think you're organized, and then you turn the camera on, and then things just disappear. That's the brush pen. I don't want a brush pen. Well, I had it sitting right here. All right, let's find a Sharpie then. <laughs> find my pen I just had sitting here oh my gosh hang on guys let me find a sharpie here's just a sharpie pen it's just not going to show up as easily I wanted something that was going to show up so but anyway you could um I didn't draw I didn't uh, use a ruler but you could am I getting how are we doing here are we getting dark let's get this lit back up <laughs> um you can take and draw just draw your own little lines like I did it in two sections and I just hand drew hand drew my own little lines so they're kind of wonky right they're not but you could use a ruler if you want and then you have lines to write on journal on or whatever and then what you can do is you can take some of the different um you know stickers or whatever you got like this one says you got this and you can start decorating. Let's put one. Let's put that one right up here. You can put, you know, the washi tapes. You, you know, whatever. All these little things we got. You got the cut apart. You could put a cut apart in there. Um, and so what you're essentially doing is using up the stack. That's where we're heading. We're using up these stacks, and you still have all this. Look, this is all that's left from one stack. After I cut out the eight, the eight and a half by eight and a quarter, after I cut out a stack. Now, I had already used some of this, so it's not a full stack here. But after you cut apart the stack, and then you've got all these, <laughs> all these sheets, and then you just fold them up. You know, line it up there. Take your bone folder. And then make all, make all your, um, make all your uh, notebook folders. So you can do that with a whole stack. Now, you can't really put this whole stack in one. In one, you'd have to make some, like maybe three or four signatures out of, that, out of that stack. And then you still have all this left over. So it's not like you're using up all your paper because you still have this much to use. And I don't know of anybody much anymore that does 12 by 12 scrapbooking. And I literally have, I can't even tell you how many feet of scrap 12 by 12 paper I have. I love it, but I'm not using it like I used to. So this is a way that I know I will use it. All right, let me stop and see if there's any questions. I lose everything I touch. <laughs> Hi, Kim. Anybody else popping in? So if you like traveler's notebooks like we all do, you can make them out of your scrapbook paper. Again, that's not a new concept. That's that's not a new concept. But using it up, I want, I'm trying to get, get you to think about using, take one of your stacks, take one of your most precious ones, because then it'll get you over it, right? So this, this particular one was um, this one. 
this one here. This was the uh, Michael's hot buy. And it, I still have these cut aparts to cut apart. And then that also had these two sheets in here that really, really are not conducive to cutting down to that size and folding because you'll lose the. So I kept these two. So I still have these two. And I got, and I'll cut this up eventually as well. And then I have the, I got the chipboard. I keep chipboard, the backs of, of these pads because I do a lot of commission and mailing. And you put, you can use those chipboard backings um, from the backs of stacks. You can use that to stiffen up your mail, right? Okay, so that, there's one stack that I just wanted to show you how we're how we're doing that okay so look at all that that you get out of a stack and that's not including any stickers or cut aparts or you know i don't even know if this one came this didn't come with it this was i think a, an accessory to one of these stacks so anyway we we can make our own little um traveler's notebooks out of those stacks all right let's see i got notes here um oh on on these is when you make these if some of them are double-sided right a couple couple more things double-sided some are not well if they're not double-sided do the thing i showed you here with writing your own lines and decorating yourself or you could even just scrape some paint on there spray some ink you can decorate the white pages to coordinate with your uh color so you can paint ink uh, draw lines, paste leftover bits, add your ephemera. You can do what, you know, add all kinds of things on the white pages. The other option with this um, cutting these stacks up is to, if you cut up, and I've got tons of them, I pulled just a few. <laughs> I pulled a few of my stacks out here. that I'm, These are all going to get completely cut up. Okay. Uh, I'll just kind of go through them. What you can do is if you don't want to make all one one stack, not all the same, then do this. Cut up, you know, however many stacks you're brave enough to do or how much time you have, which you should have some time right now. Cut up a whole bunch of different stacks and then recombine them so that you have a very eclectic type of traveler's notebook. Uh, inserts. Well, I should call them inserts. Then you could have a couple of these, a couple of these, a couple of these, and you can have a very eclectic insert that's all different kinds of papers, not all the same, not all the same stack. Now that's just going to depend on what you like. Do you like your stuff very eclectic? Hi, Kenny. Do you like your stuff very eclectic and mixed up and junk journal like? You can do that by using uh, multiple different stacks and recombining them. Or if you just like, <clears throat> if you just like one particular stack, then do everything, cut it up and do one or do two or three. You'll have enough to do three or four inserts out of one stack, depending on how many you stack together, how many sheets you stack together. And if you want them all the same theme, if you will, then then stack them all. Hi, Mark. Stack the, that those uh, inserts all the same. But if you want to have it eclectic, then mix them. Mix them all up and just have them all different. Have them all different. You know, like two out of each of these stacks would be really cool to have a, an eclectic, very eclectic type of... Um, inserts okay all right any questions that make sense i've uh, have i lost you guys <laughs> did everybody did ever did i lose everybody so can do that so i'm gonna i'm gonna do one i'll pipe let's i'll take this it's kind of pretty and watercolory and i'm gonna show you i'm gonna cut that up but first i'm gonna show you my um <clears throat> Again, I brought her back out because this was in what Jonna sent me. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to use her on this, um, my little uh, little thoughts, big ideas. 
this one. And then again, it's the same kind of thing. It's just different signatures. So if you missed me talking about this, I, I did this right at the beginning of the show. Okay, so um, let me show you what I got here from Jonna that this will end up in my Jane journal, that notebook, the big thick notebook. A lot of this will end up in my Jane notebook because that book that that binder is so fun for me to flip through add little things glue little things swatch sketch little uh sketches with the different colors to swatch that way i just love my jane journal so um that a lot of this will go in there so i'm just going to kind of show you some of the stuff and this is she does have pictures of what comes in the kits so when you buy a from her, you can look on her Etsy and she'll, she breaks it down into different pictures. So if you want to see the different kinds of things that come in the different kits, like I said, I know she threw in a couple extra things <laughs> like this sock money ribbon, you know, and, um, and I love this. I have a, I have a, uh, what do you call it? Machine, uh, cameo cutout cameo machine, but I don't remember ever seeing this. Now this feels like I don't know, kind of like a rubbery feel. I don't know what she, this is cut out of. But um, so there's just little things like here's a, a old uh, film. If you all ever had old cameras like, you know, the 110 Instamatics and stuff like that. And then here's all kinds of little goodies in here. There's little buttons, a domino, little different kinds of twine and string. And uh, then there's ink. Um I think she said, yeah, okay, what is that one? So anyway, little uh, words in there, little uh, fabric swatches, little, here's a little paper clip with the, the little, uh, rag. I call them rag flags, little rag flags like this where they're um, little pieces of fabric on, on paper clips. And then just all kinds of things. Look, here's an old vintage broccoli casserole recipe an old actual old photograph of somebody <laughs> but it looks so it's all 60s or 50s you know and then here's some uh different yearbook different yearbook uh people she has a little uh crochet doily it's just it's so fun just to go through it it's so fun to go through it hi judy riri Liz. i said hi to elizabeth um, so anyway, this kind of stuff, I love, you know, just collecting this kind of stuff and pasting it in like my Jane journal, my Jane Jonna journal. Here's some uh, uh, quilting squares and uh, just different little fabric squares, some old labels, a flash card, little, little magazine vintage cutouts. Here's some, um, and she she has a lot of her kits. I don't know if all of her kits, the last kit I got from her, um, she she makes these little pouches. I don't have one handy right here. It's in, over there, but she makes pouches out of old sheets. And so look, this is like off of the old sheet. And uh, and so it's so vintage in the time, you know, the colors and everything. Um, different little uh, words and bingo and uh, little, um, you know, little cards from different countries. Here's the, the uh, what do you call it? And she said, thanks for the pink flowers. This, this will go in my uh, fibs book. Uh, if y'all don't know my friends in the box book, a, a journal, it's a, it's a whole nother journal <laughs> and it's starting to pile up too. I got some things from other people. Like here's my tag from Teresa. I have these things to have them stuck like right here, ready to go in. Here's my uh, ATC from Packer Die. And so I got this stuff here ready to go on the pages that coordinate with the person. So same thing for this, my little Jonna card, that'll go in there. And maybe one or two other little something somethings to go on her page. So you can see this is my Fizz journal. Let's see. So then there's a, this looks like a wine or a, like a, a wine label, some little playing cards. And <laughs> well, see this, I don't think comes in the kit. She just threw this in here. The little sock monkey <laughs> sticker. 
Oh, let's see, did one was Monday morning. Dee Dee, did you get to watch my? I watched about half of it, Mark, and then I fell asleep. Not that it was boring or anything. Mark did a video where he's making some cards. He's making some cards for um, a little girl's birthday. If y'all want to know about that, go over to Mark's newest video, and he was making cards. But I was watching you the night that the day that you did it. I was watched that that night until I fell asleep. Yeah, so because you know I don't have Jean anymore to watch at night. Jean used to be my go to sleep person. <laughs> I got Mark now, but Mark doesn't make as many videos as Jean. So anyway, but I did watch half of it, Mark, until I fell asleep. Here's a recipe card, and she said she added a few more items. See, there we go. Then made me think of you. Plus, when you plant your pineapple, top pineapple top you can make this so it's a um pineapple recipe jonna did a and i asked her to and she was kind enough to do it i asked her to make a video it's about 15 minutes i think she made a video showing how she you cut the top off the the pineapple it has to be an organic one it can't be one that's been frozen uh, or refrigerated so you know she has all that information but she shows you how she's planted pineapple tops and grown her own pineapples but the kicker is it takes three years to grow one it takes three years to grow a pineapple so uh just be aware but anyway she did make that video for me so thank you jonna here's some catnip Another little cat bookmark. This is 1993 Florida Summer Library Reading Plan. I'll have to give this one a hubster because he's always asking me for bookmarks. And this one does kind of look like R2. I think he'd get a kick out of that. So I'm going to set that one aside for hubster for a bookmark because we both read a lot. And uh, so... <laughs> Uh, let's see now. I need to set up my vid making game. Yeah, step it up. Yeah, Mark. Well, you used to do, and I think you stopped getting the, uh, what do you call it? The subscription kits to like the boxes of supplies. I can't think of the names of them now. I'm not subscribed to any of them, so they don't really come to mind. Sketchbox, I think, is one. And what's the other one? Uh, the, what's the one that Bun does? Is that sketch? Which is the one that Bun does? The box, the subscription box. I can't remember the names of them, but there's two that I'm familiar with. But I don't subscribe to either one. Hi, Laura Lou. I thought the cat in space was so human. <laughs> yeah, it does. So I'm gonna give that to I'm gonna give that to Hubster. That's so cute. And hi, Eileen. Anybody else popping in that I miss? Ju I think I said hi to Judy and. Who else? Art Snacks. Thank you. Art Snacks. Christy. Yeah. Uh, Art Snacks is the one that Bun does. By Bun. I shouldn't just call her Bun. I think it's By Bun. Roxanne. She does the Art Snacks. And Mark used to get that one. And I think Sketchbox. Oh, whatever. Anyway, Sketchbox. Art Snacks. Yeah. So anyway, um, if you, uh, Mark used to break those down. But he hasn't been doing it because I think he's not got the subscriptions anymore. So, yeah. Uh, hi, Lynn and Curly. Hey, Curly. I was like saying Curly. It's kind of like saying Beady Eye Beth. Beady Eye Beth and Curly. <laughs> you just like saying them. <laughs> so let's see what else. So then she's got this big, um, see now this, this could actually, I think, go in <laughs> trim it down a little. And it could go in, you know, trim that down. It could go in this book. So anyway, this big signature. Uh, so she's got this at the moon. And it's like out of, it's not like one of those encyclopedia type books, you know. Um, I don't know if they even make those anymore. And uh, so just some all different kinds of vintagey stuff. So um, here's some runes. Oh, the runes. I love this. I'm going to have to copy these down in my, um, what do you call it, book, in my uh, in my glyph book, Jonna, my, my composition glyph book. I'm going to have to, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to pull this out. This is going to have to go in my glyph book. Okay, so let's set that aside. And just all kinds of different art book pages. And look at these vintage magazine pages. <clears throat> 
And uh, yeah, oh look, top. Um, we used to collect. It wasn't this one. It wasn't the top TV value, the top value. It was the S and H S and H green stamps. So whoever collected, raise your hand if you collected S and H green stamps or the top value stamps. And you'd put these in little books, and then after you filled the book, you could take them in and redeem them for cookware and all kinds of stuff. Mom, mom really, we did it when we were little. Mom did it when she was an adult. But uh, anyway, so there's that. Look at this is just so fun. Looks like something out of um, a post office, like a zip code, New York zip code list. Um, some vintage wrapped writing pad and some um, calendars. Oh, look, this is like wow, one of those kids' books, too. You know, different countries. We used to have to, we used to have to, I don't know if they do anymore. When we were growing up, we had to study all these countries. Geography was a big thing when we were in school. I don't even know if they have geography anymore. I know they don't teach a lot of American history, but uh, yeah. Make sure your kids, if you're an American, make sure, these are from Mind Trap. Make sure your kids read the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and the Bill of Rights. Make sure your kids at least have some inkling of their freedoms. Seriously. Seriously, make sure your kids and grandkids have some inkling of where their freedoms came from and the freedoms that they have. Most you go out on college campuses and ask them what their freedoms are and they can't even name them. But that's for another day. Uh, all just all kinds of little papers. And here's a little looks like maybe a German paper. Here's another uh, recipe card. And these are, these used to be a subscription thing you could get to. I never subscribed to the plant one. I have the craft ones, Jonna. I have the uh, uh, Eileen ones, the I Aileen ones, and different craft subscriptions from 25 years ago, 30 maybe, 30 years ago. Those subscriptions that you could get that were like this. This is a plant one, but they had crafts. I've shown them before. I've shown them before, the old craft uh, subscription um, cards like this. I had a couple. I think I had four different ones over the years. I gave two of them to one of, um, I think it was one of Boo's teachers years ago. I gave them to her thinking maybe she could show have some crafts for the kids years ago. Uh, a piano, a player piano, a paper some wall vintage wallpaper and some envelope just all kinds of little things like this this is this stuff will go in my jane jan uh, jane jana journal <laughs> my jane jana journal and this is cool though guys there's a reproduction from 1989 um, some more different like wrapping papers out of art books Basic French vocabulary and grammar. I maybe I can learn how to say Mignette Bon Bonjour. <laughs> the name of that book, that color book, I can never say. There's some vintage um, uh, home and garden type home decorating. How um, you know? Because this is this. I grew up with this kind of this style, if you will. Um, so yeah, some music sheets. And I don't know who, let me, let me raise your hand again. Eileen can raise her hand, I'm sure. <laughs> Janet, maybe. Didn't y'all have to sing in school? Like everybody got up on either in the cafeteria or the stage and have to learn these songs, not just God Bless America and My Country Tis of Thee, but all these other kind of songs too. We'd have to sing these as a group, not individually, but, you know, as a group. Uh, some more wallpaper or, or scrapbook papers. Here's some more English Italian vocabulary, and uh, some that's pretty right there. Some graph um, ledger paper, and then she sent me one of these. So she does have some of these. I think I don't know if she's selling them individually or if you have to buy one of her kits. But these are the vintage legal size. Um, file folders with the metal uh, holding things in there like this. Like here's like this ledger. See, you could put that, you know, in there like this. 
So, but um, so she came across because Jonna goes to thrift stores and well, she probably hasn't lately, but you know, thrifting and you know, vintage, you know, places. And she has a whole, she felt, came across it. She had a bunch of these out in her uh, stash. So, and it's got a little bit of an accordion there. So you could put a couple of things. And she's also, she worked in this. I think this is actually what Jonna is working to do the Kathy Arbor file folder project. She's working in this file folder. Hi, Gail. So, um, yeah, y'all just, you know, peruse the awesomeness that is sister woman, preppy, crafty girl, Jonna, uh, and see what she has on her YouTube channel. She and Darcy uh, used to do have a channel together. Uh, and then, and of course, you know, Jonna went to Australia for a year and uh, was training over there to be a camera woman. And uh, so... And then she's remodeling her house. And that's a whole nother story. That's for her to tell. But anyway, uh, so she does have these kits for sale in her Etsy shop. So if you like vintagey stuff, then go over there and check out the Preppy Crafty Girl. You have a hundred of the fall folders, Jonna? Okay, so a hundred. She has a hundred of them. So if you like these vintage green legal size fall folder, then um, hop over there and, and see Jonna. Uh, let's see. Uh, she's doing a series of them this year with Kathy's fall folder projects. Yeah. So, and I've, I think I've watched all of them so far, Jonna. I think I've watched all your uh, videos that you have so far. They're really fun. Jonna has just that kind of voice and personality. It's very chill. You will relax. You will relax at one of her uh, videos. She streams and makes videos. So, uh, let's see. You have some of John's artwork, Eileen. Let's see who else is saying anything. Thank you, Pacola. There's John's Etsy shop, and y'all can just follow uh, Preppy Crafty Girl to click over to her YouTube channel as well. So I'm excited to uh, play with this and put it in my Jane Jonna journal. Okay, now let me go ahead, and I'm just going to do this for a minute. Uh, well, probably about 10 minutes. I think it took me about 10 minutes to cut up the other one. So if y'all want to get a cup of coffee, if you don't want to watch me cut up a stack, <laughs> but I want y'all to see that, you know, cutting it up, how to cut it up, eight and, a, eight and a half by eight and a quarter, folded in half makes the size that you need for your, um, for your, uh, what do you call it, uh, traveler's insert. This is one, this is just one I'm working in right here. This is just stuff I've got going on. I haven't really done too much with it except do some gluing, some painting, some scraping, um, a little bit of uh, painting on, in here. This one here. And then I did this. I did paint the cover and varnish this cover. And then I'm also working in one of the these. I'm working in lots of these guys. I'm going to be honest with you. I, ha I can't even tell you how many. <laughs> I can't even tell you how many travelers books I've got going on. This right here. I have at least six like this. I have at least six different ones that I'm working in. <laughs> I'll just pull two or three of them are in my bedroom. And then I got this one. I got this one. So I'm working in all kinds of different topics. <laughs> and they're different topics and different things for different, different projects. Um, some I study and write in, some I take notes in, some I do journaling in, some I do collaging in. Oh, and then this one that I showed y'all last week that I've been working in, uh, I went through and I punched a hole in every page. I needed a, a, a planet. <laughs> I needed a planet. Now, I don't know where all my planets are right this minute. They're in one of my bins right over here. But I needed... Oh, you know, I, I needed, I wanted, well, I needed and wanted, here's the sum of them, some planets. So after I punched out one, <laughs> after I punched out one, I went ahead and punched out one of every page, every page but this one finished. I have one finished page right here. Where is it? That I didn't punch out something out of. Where's my finished page? Where are you? This one. I didn't punch anything because I'd already finished this one. 
<laughs> um, yeah, the cover is the same size. Okay, so I didn't punch out this, but look, after I punch them out, look, they're double-sided too, but look how cool they are. So, you know, you can do, you can punch some out uh, of uh, when you make collage, mixed media, or any of this, take a punch and punch out, um, doesn't have to be out of your notebook, you know, it can just be off of art cards or collage pages or sheets so anyway, I punched I punched one out of every every um, every page except this page because I'd already finished this page and I didn't want to punch into this one. But all the other ones, and because they're not done yet, right? So these aren't done. So, um, but they all have pages. Uh, they have a punch out of them. And then this one is going to be all like whitewashed. This is going to be like whitewashed. This one's going to be more like the collage. See, I haven't broke down my themes, you know, like this, this book will be like this. This book is going to be more like this with quotes and things glued on top. Things will be attached on top of this. Uh, not written like, I don't like to write, like try to write around this, you know, it'll be things that are cut out and glued on top of things like this or quotes or words or if I do any kind of journaling on things like this, it's going to be cut. It's going to be on a separate page and cut out and put on here. So this one's going to be all whitewashed. This one's going to be all collaged like this. And then, you know, I've just got like, yeah. <laughs> so I do a lot of, um, and then here's my empty one that I want to use for my these papers, uh, the the stacks that I'm cutting up, my cut up stacks. <clears throat> okay, so let's put those right there where I know where they are. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm going to do this. So you can do it a couple of ways. A lot of them, like I said, have double sided pages. Some have single side. Now look, see you can see. I've used this for collage. See, I do use my stacks for collage. So I'm going to just take that and set it aside for now. I'm not going to worry about cutting those up. But I want to just show you. I'm going to take this apart. Some stacks are double-sided. This one has a little bit of a texture to it. Again, you can use it. You don't have to necessarily write or journal on the stack You or on the paper. You can... You can take your writing, your journaling, your writing, your doodling, your sketches, whatever it is that you like to throw into your travelers. You can um, do that on a separate sheet of paper and then glue it, especially if this one has a little bit of texture. Then you can glue it on here. Some are more cardstock. Some are more... Um, stacks rather some are more uh cardstock some are more thin paper you can use both either like this see this is leftovers now this needs to go over here in that other stack of my leftovers from a stack this one's kind of slick and shiny this particular stack has different textured papers in it and a lot of them have like two to four depending on the kind of stack different sheets like this one I think it's got three of each but I've already used some so especially if you've gone through your stacks and you've used a lot of them you know you might have two or three sheets of one kind left you might have like this one I know I used a lot in some other projects so I think I only have one of these left um <clears throat> So what I usually do is I just is take it apart first. So look, now here's some double-sided ones. Okay, so this is the first one I've come across as double-sided, which is good, you know. Again, you can write and journal and whatever you want to do, sketch, doodle, draw, write down your thousand and one. <laughs> you know, the ideas of Society of Idea Collectors are lists that we talk about here our uh, prompts, the things that we all share in our prompts and lists. You can write those down. You could type them out, print them out on, you know, your computer. Um, and then, uh, and glue them on, on top of your pretty papers, right? 
I watched a 2017 video of the flow book of paper you have. Did you do the paper dolls? If so, did they turn out? No, I, I, I think something like that, the paper dolls and those kind of things. I might have sent it to mom or I would have just cut it up and used it as is. I wouldn't have cut the paper dolls up, I don't think. But I do have this one still. This one's still sitting over here and I have it in two sizes because it came. This one came in two different flow books. Hang on, I'm knocking everything over. Uh, two different flow paper books. These girls right here, and they came in different sizes because they came in different books. But they're they're like little, um, <laughs> like you can draw your own clothes on them. Hubs, Hubster's home, so that, that's what y'all are hearing there. So there's two different sizes because over the years, Flo has reproduced these in different Things. So I have these, but they're just sitting over here as like almost like a decoration on my table because I just like to look at them. <laughs> I just like those girls. I just like those girls. So they sit over there and I just stare at them. Okay, so this stack here has got um, the second half of this stack has got a double sided paper. So I'm just going to finish this real quick. And this is kind of like cardstock weight. And on my guillotine cutter here, I can cut two sheets at a time. I could probably cut three, but I don't want to mess my guillotine cutter up. So I only cut cut two pieces of cardstock at a time. But that being said, you can cut a couple sheets at a time with one of these. And, you know, you get these at uh, uh, now. I guess you can get them at Amazon, maybe Walmart. Um, I probably got mine at uh, the Office Staples or Office Max or one of those. So I'm going to run down and get me some hot coffee and see what go, is going on with Hubster. And then I'll be back and we're going to cut these up. See, here's the cardboard. So the cardboard here, let me just cut this in half here. This cardboard, sometimes this rubbery plastic stuff that's holding everything together, just coach. I'm going to cut myself. Uh, comes, <laughs> comes off when you do the paper. But um, I keep the cardboard. I keep the cardboard because I, I can put this when I send things out. It gives a little sturdiness. So I have a stack. I have a stack in the corner of that stuff. So what I'll do is I'll keep this, just the thin sheet here so I have that. And um, then I'll cut all this up two at a time. But let me go check on Hubster and I'll be right back, guys. Let me go get some hot coffee. Let me see. Let me leave Andy in charge. And this is an adult finger puppet. It's not for kids. <laughs> Just gotta, you gotta say that anymore. All right, I'll be right back. back my coffee was cold so i'm gonna have to just stick with my juice i didn't want to take the time to make coffee so okay let me check chat real quick see if anything's going on hi ashley 
Tanya, Devin, <clears throat> Irene, Artful Dabbler, Tori. I think I said hi to you, Judy. Hi, Prismacolor. <laughs> so you can decide which way you want. It, it doesn't really matter to me when it's just a pattern like this. The only time it really mattered when I cut any of these was like when it had like a moon and you didn't want the moon to be on the back side or, or whatever. So if it's just a general overall pattern, I don't care which way it runs when I fold it. But if you want to know when you cut the eight and a half and I have it marked here and here, eight and a half and eight and a quarter, when you cut the eight and a half, that's going to be the long. That's going to be the, the, the front, the full size like this. Okay. The eight and a quarter, when I turn it sideways, is going to be this. Okay. So this is eight and a quarter. When you open it up, it's eight and a half. So I usually cut the eight and a half first, unless there's some kind of specialty something on there that I want to um, you know, manipulate to be in a certain spot on the, on the insert. So eight and a half and then I eight and a quarter. And again, I have it marked right there. And then these, I just leave sitting over here till they all, they're all stack up and you're going to have this left off of each sheet. Okay. You're going to have this much left off of each sheet that you can still use for, you know, journaling spots or whatever, you know, and other projects. So you have still have a lot of paper left even after this. So after you've cut it in the eight and a half, I don't do this now. I wait till I get them all done. Then you just fold it in half and you can decide which side you want front, which side you want back. If you've got more than one sheet, you can have one of each. And, the, and I just line it up at the edge and I start in the middle by pushing down in the middle. And then from the middle, take the bone folder. And then you'll get a perfectly straight edge if, if you're paying attention and not looking at chat. <laughs> so like this one, I could have had it folded this way or this way. And you don't have to decide right now. You can just have a whole stack of these ready to go. Have you ever counted how many stacks? Of <laughs> how many I have stacked or how many stacks I have? I can't tell you how many. I have feet of paper. And that's why I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to use it up. And I know I'm not going to use 12 by 12 sheets other than ripping off areas to use in my collage, which, you know, I'll have this stuff to use in collage. So if I want a little bit of torn something, something, I'll have this. Right, I'll have these little pieces left to use in my collage, okay? Um, rather than just tearing this little piece off of a 12 by 12 and leaving it in the stack and not really using it, if I cut them down, and I'm going to do a lot of my stuff. I'm not going to make you guys watch me. <laughs> I'm not going to make you guys watch me do, you know, maybe, uh, let's see, that's about 10. Probably, I don't know, I could probably do 40 stacks. There's probably at least 40 stacks I have that I'm not really using, okay? So I could cut down 40 stacks and look how many little um, inserts I could make. And again, I want to make a lot of these and I want to give them away or sell them, or but not right now, not with all the post office, the everything going on right now. But after we all open back the country back up, um, then I want to do some giveaways and I might sell some. And uh, the problem with buying 12 by 12 paper, Joe, is the shipping. Because you have to mail those in, in like pizza size boxes. And one, one 12 by, if I wanted to mail one 12 by 12 sheet in a box, it's $25. It, you see, it just doesn't pay to, and, and I've talked about that before. People go, I'll buy stacks, I'll buy those 12 by 12s. No, you won't because you have to pay three times, three times or four times what the stack costs in shipping. So it's, uh, it's yeah, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm just not going to do it, Joe. And especially right now, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, I am going to do these. <laughs> I'm going to make some of these to sell and, and give away, but I am not going to do 12 by 12. It's way too much. It's too much work for me. And I feel bad. I feel bad about trying to make people pay 25 
to $45 in shipping for 12 by 12. I'm just not going to do it. So just FYI, I'm not going to, I'm not going <laughs> to sell 12 by 12. I might sell some of these, but not 12 by 12. But right now I'm not selling or giving away any because of the situation. So I'm just cutting them down to size right now, setting them aside. I'm doing two at a, two at a time. And look, there's like, you know, different, different, uh, different uh, patterns. And uh, some are double-sided. Some are not double-sided. But if you want these kind of stacks, they're at Michael's. Look at Michael's. All the, if, you're, if that's what you're talking about, wanting stacks like these, these are hot buys at Michael's all the time. Not these exact ones, but they, trust me, trust me, they have tons of stacks and hot buys at Michael's year-round. Now, right now, I don't know what they're doing right now, but. So I'm going to turn a couple of these over. So anyway, I'm just letting all this sit to the side until I finish cutting down. So I just thought I'd do at least one stack. Uh, and again, you can, if you're cutting down a bunch of stacks, you can do, it doesn't all have to, uh, you don't have to keep them all together in one stack. It can be eclectic, right? You can have some of this stack. You can have some of, look, I got this meow stack. You can have them all mixed. Like I said, I pulled about eight stacks. I pulled eight stacks I just showed you a minute ago. Uh, and I'll probably do some, uh, like in a, an insert that they're all together, they all go together. And then some that are eclectic, like junk journaling. And then you can add other things to it. Like here, let me get that one back again. Let's see. Where, where you stack them up and look, I just did some little doodling in here to show you. You can put your stickers and your doodads and you can make your own lines. You can do whatever on the blank side. If you got a, one side of the card stock is white, then do your own journaling, stickers, washi tape, all those stuff that comes with it. Uh, and then you still have these bits, right? After you cut off, you can fold those up and have them as part of the as part of the um, insert as well, okay? So I can do some where they're all the same family of stuff, or I can do some that are eclectic and mix up the different styles, right? The different styles. So I am sitting here cutting out two at a time. And uh, after I do this, I'll take en a enough of a break to read out of this book because I've been meaning to and I keep forgetting. Okay, so here's a, here's one where you're going to have to decide. Do you, want, do you want this part, which I do, or do you want just all purple? Because if I do the eight, eight and a uh, quarter here, it's going to cut that teal off. So this is one of those papers where you're going to have to decide. Is that the right one? Yeah. You're going to have to decide which end you want to cut off. But you don't usually have to do that for many of them. So see, I wanted to make sure I had that teal there. I could do, I, now I got another sheet, so I can do it the opposite on here. But uh, I'm not really overly concerned about it. I, I like all of them. <laughs> so okay, so I'm cutting eight and a half, turning it sideways, eight and a quarter. Again, I'm doing two at a time. So, Dee, Dee, I like the sound of the cutting board. I know, I do too. I, it's very, it's ch very chill, isn't it? Very chill. So, again, I was not using these except, uh, you know, a bit here and there in my collage. And I know I'll use it more because you saw how I am with uh, Traveler's inserts and how many different options <laughs> I have with them. So, uh, I know I'll use these. Uh, as traveler's inserts where I won't use them as 12 by 12. And again, if you have three or four sheets of the same pattern in each one and you really like one of the patterns, we'll keep one of the patterns. But to keep a whole stack when I'm not used to, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of a waste. So I'm going to use them for myself. I'm going to do some for either to sell and give away after everything settles down. 
and uh, we can start, you know, we get our freedom back. And I don't say that lightly. I mean it. We get our freedom back and uh, <laughs> we can start uh, again. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Thank you, Pacola. I'm glancing over at chat. And if I see it in caps, I know you're. Otherwise, I can. Well, I still miss some. But, you know, I try. Uh, I try to be aware of anything that's in caps. So, and now we're into this, this, the rest of this stack is just white on one side and um, printed on the other, which is fine because then on the white side, you can do your own journaling lines or your uh, own stickers or washi tape or whatever, okay, or paint or ink or whatever. So you get a nice quick, you know, I, like I said, you know, I, I'm stopping to look and read chat. But otherwise, you know, I think I did that other one in like five minutes. You can do a whole stack in like five minutes. Not that you have to rush. I think I could do these are a little thinner. They're still cardstock, but they're not as thick as the other, so I think I can do three at a time. Yeah. All right, let's see. I know, right, Orla? Might have to make you one, Orla. Um, I can't, I don't, I don't want to promise that, that uh, but this would be a nice for those that support the channel this month. I'm not saying I'm going to do it because I don't see how much time I have to make them. But to have a, one of these inserts be the monthly reward this month. I don't know. Is that something? Because I usually do my own art and prints. But would, would that be something that those of you that support the channel would like? Would you like a traveler's insert um, from some random paper? And if you do, I'll ask Orla since she says she likes it. I'll get I'll get Orla's opinion. Would you rather have it all match? And I say match. Would you like to have it like out of one stack, or would you like it eclectic, where there's like multiple different pages out of different stacks? What would y'all think? Would you are is are most of you willing to have multiple papers? I mean, like I say multiple. I mean non. The stacks are mixed up. Or the stacks are mixed up. Mix <laughs> shell goes, mix that stuff up. <laughs> you know, I know a lot, you know, sometimes people are like, uh, what do you call it? I, I don't want to say OCD, but kind of, you know, you're a little OCD about not having uh, things that don't go together. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mix that stuff up. That's good. <laughs> All right, this one I try to do three. I was a little thicker. <laughs> Come on in, honey. Arvel Deller said mix. Let's see. I'm cutting taking the sizes down to make the sizes for travelers inserts, which are eight and a quarter by eight and a half. Eight and a quarter insert page is eight and a quarter by eight. That's the size of the traveler's notebook. Okay. Yes, honey. Okay. When I come back, I'll take the cats away. Oh, you're going to take the cats out. Okay. And I made you some fresh, but I didn't turn it on. Oh, well, turn it on. I'll okay. come down and get it. Thank you, honey. You're the sweetest one. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'll see you in a little bit. You still want me to get you some gas, sex, and bean? <laughs> so funny. No, I'm not Annie. He, he's pulled that on my daughter. Uh, when when Annie came to visit, this was when she was, I, she might have still been in nursing school. I don't know, it was years ago. But um, <laughs> he's when she visited one time, he said, I need you to run to the store for me and pick me up a couple things. She goes, sure, Dad, what do you need? And he goes, well, I need some gas eggs, some Beano, some, I don't know what all he said, preparation <laughs> a bunch of stuff like that. She goes, I'm not getting all that stuff. He goes, well, you're a nurse, aren't you? <laughs> uh, anyway, he's he's got that kind of sense of humor. 
you know, the 12 year old boy kind of sense of humor. Okay. So anyway, now, now I can divide these up into, you know, the leftover bits by size, you know, I'm dividing them up here by size and these can be used as a page, like this could be glued on a page. You might have to trim it a little more, but let me get where it was my, Where's one of my inserts? Where did I go? Oh, now I get to the, the insert. Where did it go? Well, good. <laughs> oh, here. So you have this now. Now you can, um, you know, if you want, have a. Um, you could take one of these and glue it in. Now you might have to trim it, whatever. Look, see how long it is. But you could you could use this as a glue in, a tip in. It could be a tip in with washi tape. You could have a tip out. You could washi tape it, you know, either way, this way. And then you have journaling places. So it's just about assembling. And I know all of you here have seen a, probably a gazillion videos on YouTube on traveler's notebook and traveler's inserts so i'm just telling you what i'm going to do with this is i'm going to use it either sell it give it away some of it of course i'll use for my own you know because i do a lot of uh i do a lot of usage in traveler's notebooks so you can use all these scraps and you, so you're not really, you, you, you think, well, I don't have that paper anymore. Well, yeah, look at all this you still have. <laughs> you have a lot left. So you want to have a way to organize this as well. If you're going to use it as inserts, tip ins, tip outs, flip ins, flip outs, <laughs> whatever. So there we go. So let's see. Let's divide that up. Okay. So let me show you again how much we got left. Look how much we have left. Look at all that. So you got all that still left that you can do other projects with. How many sheets do you use for an insert? It's going to depend on the thickness of the paper. Because like this paper right here is kind of thin. So let me see. I'll fold and see how many. This is a little, some of this, not all of it, but some of this is a little more textured and a little thicker. And it just depends on when they start sticking out, then you might want to say, well, I'm going to start another insert. But let's see. Let's see how many we can get. All right. Let me stack up this. So here, and I got to turn some of them because I just set them aside to the side and I didn't get them all going the right way. So here's what I cut right now. Okay. And I and this wasn't even a full stack, right? And this is what I got left. Got all that left. So, you know, you're just breaking it down. Break it down. Um, yeah, Robert, we already know all that. You don't need to, you don't need to uh, give us advice. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, let's see here. This is a couple sheets left over from this. Let's put this over here. Um all right, uh, let me get the other paper. There goes Hubster. He's going out. Yeah, he is. He's going out. We do. People do still have to eat. Some people uh, do still have uh, jobs that they have to, like Hubster's in HR. If he doesn't go to work, nobody gets their insurance or their unemployment. So I'm sure, Robert, you don't mind if he goes to work, do you? Sorry, I've been a little funny there. Okay. <laughs> sorry, guys. I'm big on this on this freedom thing. I'm sorry. Okay. So, uh, well, sorry, not sorry. All right. So here we go. Back over to this. These are some of the things that you can get in, not necessarily in the stack, but they have like all kinds of stickers and letter, you know, and all kinds of this. These cutouts came in the stack too. So sometimes you'll have cut aparts. You'll have all this comes in a stack. I cut these out and I'll use those. I'll use these in the travelers or I'll include them. If I sell any of these, I might include some of this. Same thing. I got stickers and this is the leftover right here. This is the leftovers from this stack. <laughs> Robert has his little emoji with his mask. That's fine. You know, people, 
it, really, if you are uh, afraid of, you know, stay in and do it. Nobody's making you go out. Nobody's making you go out. You stay in your house as long as you want. Seriously, stay in the house. If you don't. Nobody's going to make you come out. Okay, so let's see. Um, <laughs> don't get me started, guys. Let's just have some fun. Let's just have some fun. <laughs> All right, so now I've got one, two, three, four. I've got five in here, and, and then this is just a little. I showed you how you can use some of the smaller pieces as a separate little insert in there. <laughs> so there's five. Um, let me get a regular, and there's different ones with different. Um, uh, let me let me get an official. Let me get an, a look at an official traveler's notebook uh, insert and see how many are in there. Unless somebody does, somebody know how many are in one. Let's see. And some and these papers are thinner though. So like the traveler's insert here, this is a grid pattern one. The paper's thin. This is a little thicker cardstock, so you're probably not going to get as many in an insert um, with cardstock as you will with paper. Let me pull this one out here. So these are, this paper's thinner. This is a grid paper. It's thin. Look, so it's very thin. So you're going to get more in here than you would with cardstock. But let me count how many sheets of just paper. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let me find where the middle is. It looks like 11 or 12, 12. All right, so it looks like there's 12 sheets in here. Okay, 12, fold in half, right? But there's 12, 12 sheets of thin paper. So maybe 10, let's get, yeah, but let's say, let's try 10, because this is cardstock. This is just paper. This is thin paper, right? So this is, this is thin, this is like copy paper thin right this is cardstock so let's do a let's do a check let's do 10 and see how many that is i mean how that works out okay so let's see so i've got five because what happens is and it doesn't matter because you can always trim them if it bothers you but what's going to happen is they're going to start sticking out they're going to start feathering out okay so i said that's five okay let's do this one here six and again, I'm just kind of matching it up to the middle, and then I push down on the middle and then go both ways, and that lines you up. If you try to go, I'm going to get different ones. If you try to go like this, and I'm not going to do it because I don't want to get it off center. If you try to line it up like that and you start over here, you're going to get it off wonky. So what you want to do is line it up and then push down in the middle. And then do that. And then it, it, it stays lined up. Okay, so that's five, six, seven. And like this one, this one's really a little extra thick even. So we're going to try 10. We're going to try 10. Okay, one more. Let's go with this moon one. See, I cut it at the top where I didn't even tear it. Okay, so let's go with this one. Okay, so this should be 10 all total. Let's see how fat that makes it. Okay, let's see. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Devin, you guys, you got to crease it in the middle. Hi, G. Crease it in the middle and go left and right. Okay, am I kind of far away, or do I need to zoom in? I just noticed that we're kind of, I, well, I was cutting all those stacks, so I wanted you to see the stacks, but I guess we can zoom in a little now. Um, all right, so now let's go ahead and stack these up. And again, they're white on the inside, but you can paint, do your lines like I did this one. See, I made my, I just, I just drew them, hand drew them. I just hand drew them. And then I can go in here with, um, uh, let me get a, let me get a food a, let me get a food a here somewhere. Lettering, to do some lettering. Hang on, let me find one. 
I know I got one in my little bin, a little bag of pins over here. Let's see what this one. How's that one looking? So like this just says seek adventure. I'm let's just, you know, I'm not, I'm just gonna write whatever I want, but we can do. So you can write your, you know, just make your own wonky lines. And do your own journaling, writing, and, it, you know, you can do them thinner. Or if you just write, like I write very tiny normally. I write very tiny. So I could almost get two, lot, two sentences on one line there. But if you like a space between them, then let me get another pen. Let me get a fine liner here. Let's get a fine liner here. Then you could do, like, let's go over here. This is how I normally write. When I annotate books or write my own notes, this is how small I write. <laughs> That's how I write normally. See, and I write straight up and down. Um, it was so funny because what I, I've always liked to write and journal and take notes and study. I've always liked to do that. And over the years, I'm talking since I was like a teenage, junior high. I would, I have perfected what, for me, the style of writing for normal writing, not, not the fancy scripts or the calligraphy, which I've done calligraphy too, but for just my normal writing and note taking, I have tried every kind of writing ever. You, like, you don't even know. Let me see. Let me have a piece of blank paper. Hang on. I will show you some, just to give you an example. And I'm sure some of you, trust me, I know. I don't even have to guess. I know some of you. Let me just get a, a piece of, um, like, just a piece of typing paper here. I say typing paper. Copy paper or some a blank sheet of paper. <laughs> I know, y'all, there's many of you that have done this. When you would, were in school, and you would try to like write your name. So I, at first, I really like big chunky letters. So well, I probably didn't write like that D. I probably would have done it like that, you know. But oh, let me. Well, I want you to be able to see it. Let me do something. Let me get a little bit bigger, but not too big. Well, so I used to write really big and cursive like this. And my mom has the most beautiful handwriting. She writes like this. I'll show you my mom's. She writes like this. So like that. But then I didn't like all the, I couldn't get all my angles exactly the same, you know? Yeah. I couldn't, you couldn't get all the angles to always be the same, right? You couldn't always have them the same when you'd be, especially if you had to write fast or take notes or anything, you couldn't do it that pretty all the time. And uh, then I said, well, I don't want to, I'm going to start writing straight up and down. So then I started writing kind of fat and up and down. So it would be kind of like chunky and, and straight up and down. <laughs> okay. So then it would be straight. And, and then, then I started getting, then I tried and I did this. I'm telling you over the years, guys. And here's the thing. If I had written, let's say in school, I'd written out a report. If I'd written out a report and I'd done it like this and it didn't come out, like I said, no, you know what? I think I want to write like this now. I'd rewrite the whole report. I'd rewrite the whole report. And so I would spend, oh, maybe I would probably work on one lettering style for like maybe six months. For six months, I might write like that. Then six months, I might write like that. Six months. And, I, and so over the years, I, I had perfected the way I like to write. Okay, then I started doing, um, I signed my um, my work like this. When I'm signing my artwork. So this is more how I write now, except smaller. <laughs> and then, hey, 
when in the during the 80s well actually i did a little bit of calligraphy in the 70s but during the 80s early 90s before desktops came out where everybody could just print out their own fonts and everything i got into calligraphy and i'm talking like the dip pen calligraphy like you know like hang on like this kind of calligraphy <laughs> Like this kind of calligraphy, right? So I did this for a lot of years. And then nobody wanted to buy it anymore because they would just print fonts out on their computer. <laughs> Kim said, I changed my writing so many times. Say, yeah, I'm not the only one, right? I love to write. So now um, when I'm just writing, that's this is how about the size of something I'd sign. And of course, it depends on the piece. But all my art, I sign pretty small. I don't want my signature to be like the focus. I like my signature like in one corner, other pretty small. But my regular handwriting, when I'm writing note taking, yeah, that might be a little, little, let's go. When I annotate books, when I take notes on anything I'm reading, that's that's how I write now, like right there. That's about the size of my writing. <laughs> but it used to be one of those over the years. Oh wait, I even tried this one year, one one time. I tried doing the backwards kind of thing. That was my style for a while too. I did the backwards thing. <laughs> Because I just thought it looked cool. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Barb. Are you talking to me? You're putting don't put it in caps if you're not talking to me. Because I don't know, I don't have a clue what you just said right there. If you're just talking to somebody in chat, don't put it in caps. Because then I think you're talking to me and I look over and I go, what did I miss? Then I'm scrolling back trying to figure out what the heck you're talking about, but you're not talking to me. Um, so anyway, there's just all different ways that I uh, tried to do this. <laughs> yeah, I'm lefties too. Are you a lefty, John? I don't remember. And uh, so anyway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so again, you know, this is how I'll write normally. When I, So if I was going to fill up this whole line, let me just write Seek Adventure. Seek Adventure. See, I could I could get two lines right there. How long do you keep your finished art journals? Um, they all are on my shelves, and I keep them. Uh, <laughs> I'll just I know I have pictures on my phone. Um, yeah, in the last, the, I would say in this room, I have other I have sketchbooks. I have sketchbooks and other art from before I moved in this house, and it's all in the closet. So I have probably 20 years of art in the closet, but in here and in my room, let me just take a quick picture. Um, and this is just one shelf. I have many shelves, but this is, uh, this is kind of like some of the stuff from the last 20 years and especially the last 10 years of streaming. Here's, these are all, all art journals. These are all, and that's, those are stacked three deep. They're stacked three deep. Uh, these are all art journals throughout here. That um, <laughs> And these aren't the ones I have shelves going across the top of my room that are full. Wait a minute. Let me take one more picture here. Let me go up here. Then at the tops of all my shelves, because shelves go all the way around my room. At the tops of my shelves, let me turn it sideways. These are all journals up here. And these go all the way around my room. <laughs> so, yeah, done a lot of journaling, art journaling, sketchbooks. So how do I keep them? That's how I keep them, Rebecca. On my shelves. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I was say, Preppy Capri Girl said, I used to practice left. Oh, you just wanted to be a lefty. You weren't really a lefty. You just wanted to practice. <laughs> That's funny. All right. So now we've got, um, now we have five here that I'd already done previously. 
So let's just stick five more in here. Let's see how far they stick out. And again, you can trim them. You could trim these down so they don't stick out. But see, that doesn't bother me. But you see how they're sticking out? That's 10. That's 10 pieces of paper. See how they're going to stick out? They're all the same size. But what happens is, is they start stacking up here in the spine and they start sticking out. Now, you could trim those, but it just doesn't bother me to have it like that. <laughs> So, but if it does, if you don't want them sticking out, and depending on how big your uh, notebook, your, your, you know, how these come in different, you know, they're, some are a little wider, some are a little taller. This is a Jane Davenport one. So if I use one of these, let's see what happens. So it's not sticking out, but if I add a, if I add a whole bunch of signatures, then it might, you see. So it just depends on but you can always trim them down. I'm going to tell you this. If I give them away or sell them, they're coming to you like this. <laughs> if you want them trimmed down, you're going to have to trim them down yourself. I'm not trimming them all down to make sure that they're flush. Um, if I had one of those laser cutters, then I probably would because it would just go zip, zip, but not when I have to do them individually. So, yeah, they do, uh, they do stick out a little, but... Uh, <laughs> Okay, so Hubster made me coffee, and I can smell it. He, uh, so let me go grab me a cup of coffee so I can keep my voice going. And uh, so that is how you can use up your stacks, right? How you can use your stacks up. So again, oh, one of them I, is folded. I folded this one wrong because it's sticking up taller. So this one, although it's okay, I can just trim it down. I'll just trim it down a little. But you got to make sure you get the eight and a half and the and the eight and a quarter going the right way, okay? So, but that was sticking up at the top, okay? So, um, yeah, I, it just depends on what you like. It's easy to flip when it's like that. It's easy to flip to a page, but then again, if you have some that have blank pages on the back, then you can either put your own journaling in them, or your stickers, or your washi tape, or you can do a. Uh, thing of scrape some paint on there the only thing about using acrylic paint unless you use a Bic ballpoint pen you can't really write over easily without ruining your pens you can't really write on top of acrylic paint easily I mean you can do it with your uh, Faber-Castell pit pens but they're not gonna you know that they're expensive to be journaling on on top of uh, paint you your Bic the the best thing to use is just a big biro, big, you know, this. If you're going to write on top of acrylic paint, this is the best thing to use, although it can smear. You got to make sure you're not running your hand across it when because it'll smear. Okay. So, but this will, these will write over anything. Your big ballpoint pens will write over everything. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, this is a Jane Davenport cover. I bought, I have this one and this one. Which this one's been using for another purpose. So these were the two that she came out with. I just emptied this one out. I took everything out of this one to have for our sample, you know. Okay, so let me run down and get some coffee. I'll be right back. Okay, so I got my coffee. I'll leave the door open. The cats might want to come in. All right, so again, that is how to use up your stacks. Use up your stacks and still have all this left, right? You still have all this left off of a sheet 
off of the 12 by 12 pieces of paper. So let me set this aside. Set this over here. And then again, these are a couple of the other ones that I'm working in. I'm working in these. I'm also working in, oh, I forgot to give Huckster. When If he comes back while I'm still on the air, I'll have to give him this, Jonna. Tell him that's from you. Um, so you can see this is the result of cutting down a, a one stack. This is one stack, and some of with some of them being already used too. So this will make a nice a few. This will make a, a few inserts with some extra papers for if you don't like the if you don't like the blank. If you don't like it blank then you can use the edges that you cut off and you know glue it on that uh, glue it on one or two of your sides right that have the blank part so it just makes you know a way to use it's a way to use up your your um and again these are the ones that i pulled that i'm going to do first these <laughs> these are just my most recent ones guys i got tons so um, I got this My Mind's Eye, this Meow Meow Kitty. I got these crafts. This is the Hot Buys from Michaels. Same for this one. This one, the Blooming Savage. It's like, you know, zebras and tigers and all that. Plus it has the, the cut-aparts, right? This one's the mint, M-I-N-T, mint color, mint and lemon colors. <clears throat> Then this one's the craft. This is all craft paper. Here's the ones falling down. Craft paper. And then this one's got all these pretty florals. So I've got stacks and stacks. And this is just the ones that I just pulled that are my most recent ones. So, um, yeah. I'm, I'm determined not to hoard my stacks because... I'm not using them. I'm not using them anymore at 12 by 12. How easy is it to fold vellum? Um, I I probably have some vellum under under my desk here in the vault, I believe, but I don't want to dig it out right now. I don't want to have to dig out vellum, but I do have some. I've used vellum in uh, inserts before. It's the same. You can. It's easy. It's not hard to cut, fold a piece of vellum in half and use it. Uh, and again, I, writing on it, if you mean writing on it, yeah, I would use the, I would use it as a, uh, either cut it in just for decor decorative purposes behind some different things or have a, per just have a piece of vellum in there because it's pretty, maybe put a, a sticker or an attach something to it because it makes it look pretty. But I do have some vellum sheets in some of my inserts, but I don't know where they are right this minute. I, uh, Packer, uh, Diane, I, she's not going by Packer Die anymore. She's going by Diane. Um, let's see. Uh, hi, Christine. Even if you need a home for those, just saying I could, <laughs> well, I am going to, uh, I think I'm going to sell some and give some away. Uh, the, you know, what, but not right this minute. I'm going to make them. I'll spend, I'll spend a month making them, making a whole bunch of them. And then when all this virus stuff settles down, then I'll give some away. Plus, I still have six books, guys. I still have six books to give away. I'm waiting for all this to end. And uh, then I can sell some of these inserts as well. I have, let me show y'all what I have um, in, the, in the pipeline. I got two of these handmade collage. I got two of these still left to give away from um, Faithful Mess. And uh, I have done videos on these. So I'm not going to do a big show right now. I got two of those. I got this one left from Orla. She sent me one and one to give away. The Australian animals. I have two of the Kirby's from Kenny. Um, she sent, uh, no, somebody else. No, I bought one. I bought my own. I bought my own. And then she sent us two more for giveaways. So I have two of these still to give away. And then this one I saw either was on Colleen or Kathy Berg's, one of them, or maybe both of them have it. But I said, I, I didn't really think it I would use it for myself, but I thought it would be a perfect book for a giveaway for beginner for don't knock my car no don't go over there by the cord you're trying to sneak over there oh my gosh 
um, <laughs> to try to uh, for beginner mixed media people. It's called the Mixed Media Hamburger System, Karen Campbell. And she does have a YouTube video and she does show her little system. Um, she self-published this. I No, uh-uh. All right, get down. You're going to unplug me. Um, and it's very, it's very simple. It's all the different supplies. If you have, if you've never used mixed media before, you don't know how, what to layer on top of what, is this going to work with that? Do you want, you know, is watercolor going to work under this or that? You know, it's just kind of like, and so she has a system called the hamburger system. So it tells you how to layer things. If you're new to mixed media and she, they're on, she's on YouTube. All this is on her YouTube but this is just in in her book form and so it's very basic and so I bought one of these for specifically for giveaways so I've got all these books to give away once we can you know get things rolling again uh, and then again this is things with different inserts and then this one is um, collage like this this one is, is going to be like little, vin, you know, little scenes, you know, just like I do my other collage, world building. So this one's going to be a world building one. And, uh, but I did go ahead and punch a hole in every one because I wanted, <laughs> wanted those, I wanted pieces of this. So I went through and punched holes to use those for planets. But anyway, so that's what this one is. And then this one's going to be a whitewash kind of thing where I'll put words, topics, quotes or other writing on separate pieces of paper and those separate pieces of paper will go on on this journal so this is again i haven't got that far in it but you know there's quite a bit done but it's not all it's not done done is anything i do ever done done because <laughs> i am still you know i am still working on these two journals the little um the little five by five one I'm working in this one. I'm working in the eight and a half by eight and a half one. And you can see there's something on every page. There's something on every page in both in both of these. So yeah, I got those two I'm working in. And then um, I'm looking around. What else do I have to show or share? Oh, uh, I'm going to, and I showed this earlier, the stuff that I got here from John of vintage stuff. That's going to go in my... Jane Jana journal. This is one of my three ring binders. And most of this will go in my Jane journal, my Jane Jana journal. <laughs> this one's got swatches and prompts and vintage stuff like that right there. This is one of Jana's, you know, and I just stapled it in, but it's kind of like my one, my little thought, big idea thing little thoughts, big ideas, where you can just do little things here and there throughout the journal. It doesn't have to have one big meaning. It can just be your notes, like on the back of these Jane, this is her small Jane uh, prompt book. I, and I, again, I've deconstructed all three of her books and they're all in here. And then I washi tape and then here's the prompt. So if I want to write about that, I can write it here. I could sketch, I could draw, I could have ideas, I can note. So again, you know, there's all kinds of room. There's all kinds of room in here. And uh, then I made tabs out of paint chips. And this is a leftover packaging from her packaging. And um, yeah, some more Jana stuff. But anyway, so I will work on this today just because I want to add this, some of this stuff to it. Okay, sip of coffee. Where are we? Yeah, this is, <laughs> this is not even my society. I also got other binders. I got at least two other binders this full. Three, actually, because I have a 12 by 12. Uh, for Society of Idea Collectors and other stuff. <laughs> I, I, I live in this room, people. This is, this is, you know, um, yeah, this is what I do. Oh, there's that pen. It was sitting over there. There's that other pen. It was sitting over there. Okay. See, this is, this is my, uh, this is the pens I'm using all day right here. The pens I use all day are right there. 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take a minute and we're going to read out of the 1001 ways to be creative because I always wait till the last minute and I don't get this done. Um, Annette, my secret to brain overload is I write it all down. I live off of post-it notes. I write everything down and it gets it out of my head, gets it down on paper. I don't have to try to remember. Uh, and then it frees up my brain for more stuff. <laughs> I always have post-it notes or, or a traveler's insert or something handy where I can write down all the time, all the time, all day, you know. So, yeah, just got to write it down. Yeah, the 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 tabs are off of her paint, um, her paint sets. And this was in the this was the box. This was on the side of the box and it's heavy duty cardboard. So I use that for tabs. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, Google. Yeah. Uh, but I do. I I I keep uh I keep pads of note of uh, post-it notes by my bed on my table. You know, I have some kind of a little pad of something in my little because I have a small handbag just really for a wallet and uh, my phone. It's just like a wallet and phone. I can always put a thin note, little notebook or a post it note stack in there and a pen. Always got to have a pen too. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to read a little bit out of this 1001 Ways to Be Creative, a little book of everyday inspiration by Barbara and Kipfer. And um, we've been reading a couple pages a week. We're up to uh, eight, 77 through 85. But I'm going to read two pages because uh, I forgot to read out of it last week. So it's just little prompts, little ideas, little suggestions. And, you know, you don't have to do them exactly like they say, she says. You can adapt it to other creativity ideas. And that's why we have a Society of Idea Collector Notebook. If you are part of the Society of Idea Collectors, you should have a composition book or a traveler's book or a three ring binder or some way that you're collecting your ideas. So as I'm reading these off or if I read too fast, go back and write them down later or, you know, adapt them. And here's the thing. When you do this kind of thing, guys, when I read one thing off, write the gist of it down, but you can mind map that. So like, for instance, create a Mr. Potato Head out of real vegetables. Well, what if you wrote that down, Mr. Potato Head out of real vegetables, put a circle around it and, and mind mapped it out. You could do write out all the different vegetables first. Write out all the different vegetables that you could make a Mr. Potato Head out of. What could you use? If you were doing carrots, apples, oranges, a potato, then what could you use for the eyes, the nose, the mouth? You know, you can, you and get your kids to, involved in this or your grandkids because it sparks creativity. People think, well, where do you get your inspiration? How do you come up with ideas? You sit down, 99% of inspiration is in your butt. You sit down and you start. Once you start, you start writing, you start idea collecting, start mind mapping, the ideas will come. But, you know, I'll say, uh, someone go, I don't have an imagination. I'll say, well, have you tried mind mapping? Yeah, I didn't really want to do that. Well, hey, <laughs> don't be complaining. Don't be complaining if you haven't tried it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, Vern? Oh, okay. <clears throat> when was the last time you did something for the first time? Every single, number 78, sing every word of a grand opera. And you don't have to be, I can't sing, but, you know, it would be fun just to, you know, just the words. Find the, like an Italian opera and translate, you know, have it, see how it's translated. What, what are they singing? What are those opera singers singing? <laughs> what are they singing? You know? Um, and don't forget, guys, you're talking to me, put it in caps. 79, how can you be more spontaneous? I see you, baby. Number 80. Help build a children's playground. 81. Watch the movie Field of Dreams. Then figure out what you want to build. I know, baby. I know. 
Okay, I already said the Mr. Potato Head. 83, paint a picket fence. All right, so when you read that, you're probably thinking, well, I don't have a picket fence. I don't know where a picket fence is. I wouldn't know what to do, how, you know, where do I even buy? You could, you could even go to the hard, not right now. Don't anybody email me. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, at some point, go buy a picket fence and paint a picket fence. If you have a backyard or a place where you could, you know, stick that picket fence, like make a face, a person, or if you don't want to do an actual fence, then do it on paper. I know she is right. I know that they love me and they just want to be with me, uh, you know, but, and here he comes, here comes the boy carrying a toy in his mouth. <laughs> He's going to be up here next, dropping a toy on camera. You hear the toy? So anyway, um, a painting, a picket fence could be a, a one you've drawn. Kathy, um, Kathy Arbor drew some houses and it was so cute. She made little houses for all of us. There's the, there's the other one. They have to tell each other hi. She's going to smack them like, get away from my mama. I got here first. Um, and it was real cute if you follow her on uh, Twitter or Instagram. Have a backward spelling bee. Number 85, forget what other people think of your efforts. How do you compare and how, and how you compare with others and whether you will achieve will be good enough. Forget that. Because here's the thing, especially, oh, no, baby, you got to get down from there. No, 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 no. no. No, uh, uh, no, baby. Um, <laughs> if you, if you're especially, you know, if you do YouTube videos, you're a streamer, you know, you're here live, you're doing, you know, whatever it is you're doing, painting, drawing, whatever it is you're creating, and you're doing it here live. If you're worried about what other people are going to think, am I doing it good enough? Oh, it's not as good as so-and-so, but so-and-so does it better. And if you do that, you're not going to have fun. And everybody's going to sense that you don't like doing this because you're just you know, you're trying to be like either somebody else or, you know, or you're afraid you're going to mess up. If you're afraid you're going to mess up, you probably don't want to be a YouTuber or a streamer because you're going to mess up. You have to not care. <laughs> That's the thing. You have to be willing, like, I'll roll out my scroll. And sometimes they turn out. Sometimes they don't. I don't care. I mean, sure, I want to do my best. And I've said this many times. Of course, I want to do my best. I want to do my best work, my best techniques. But if it doesn't turn out, it's just paint and paper, people. It's just paint and paper. You just start over. You just roll your sleeves up and you start over. Uh, hi cool cakes yeah yeah she's gonna no now she's going over where her brother was told not to go now you get down too um <laughs> so you you just have to do it because you love doing it you know um you you hear different discussions on how do you make your channel grow and how do you do all these different things well first off if you don't love doing it whether you ever made a dime off of it or not I started out with two followers on Ustream. And of course, I moved over to YouTube about six years ago. I started out with two people. I didn't know what I was doing. I had just watched Artistic Biker, uh, Paula, and who was the other three people? Okay, I carry love. And I watched them. I go, that looks like fun. I think I could do that. So I got me a cheap webcam at the time. And it was like $50, $49.99. And I set, I hooked it up to uh, <laughs> my system at first. And it's still, I'm still got my, my camera is hanging from a yardstick. The yardstick is stuck in a bookshelf and my camera just hangs down here. You know, I'm no videographer, but I love doing techniques and showing you guys stuff. That's what it's about for me. But when I first started out, I didn't know how to set up a camera or anything. So what I did, let me get a fat enough pen that you can see what I'm doing here. When I set it up, I had my, I had this like, it was like a, um, one of the, it was like an easel type thing, but it was made for presentation board, you know, like a presentation board, like you have a big meeting and you have a big board there. It wasn't really an easel, it was metal, it's metal. And then it had this arm that came out here. I don't even know what that arm was for. But I found it at a yard sale. 
and it had this metal arm. So I you, I set this up next to me and it didn't touch the table. That that's kind of was key. It didn't touch the table so that you jiggled every time you jiggle your table, the everything jiggled your camera. So this hung over. So my desk was over here, right? My desk was over here. Here's me sitting here. And I had my camera hanging on from there with one of those little gorilla arm things, those little clampy, those little ball jointed things. And I had my camera hanging from there, pointing down. And this is how I started out, me and two people. And then the one person that I said, well, how did I do? And he said, you, you were talking so low, I thought you were doing a porn video. Because <laughs> my voice is loud and carries. I have a loud voice. And I know that. I know my voice is loud. So I said, well, I better dial it back. If I'm going to make a video, I better dial back my voice. So I started talking like this. Today, we're going to make ATCs. And we're going to make ATCs. And we're going to put spackle, spackle and paint on ATCs. And that's how I talk. That's how I talk for the first hour video I ever did. <laughs> but yeah, because I'm a loud talker, I tried to not talk to, because I didn't know. I didn't know how loud to talk. I didn't know anything, guys. I just literally plugged the camera into my laptop with this setup. With two people. <laughs> and that's, how, that's, yeah, don't ever edit yourself, right? And that's how I started. <laughs> okay, let's read one more page. <laughs> and then I'll put the post it for the next week over there. Okay, 86. Design your own tattoo. Now, I don't, I don't care, you know, tattoos for myself. I don't, but the art of tattoos, art, the art of tattoos are amazing. So you, even if you didn't put it on you, you could still design one. Make a family activity calendar. 88, play alphabet charades, spell with your body. You know, y'all know, YMCA. <laughs> There's Hubster's home again. You can hear the garage opening. Uh, how can you be more spontaneous? Oh, wait, did I... Uh, identify a big dream that is doable, but will require your particular talents. Number 90, draw a political cartoon. 91. And you could put all this stuff in one of these kind of journals, right? You could put everything I'm reading you right now, you could write it out and do it in one of in a journal like this, in a notebook. Use the panorama setting on your phone to take an epic photo. Your creativity will flourish, number 92, your creativity will flourish as you practice risk-taking, perseverance, and openness to experience. 93, dig deep into your basic assumptions. Which of them should be dropped? Number 94, create delightful children's rooms. And so that I'll stop there. And we'll go next week. So I'm trying to read like a double page spread every week. Sometimes I forget. I try to keep the book handy so I don't forget. Um, Julie goes, happy to have been. Yes, Julie's been there since day one. Julie's known. We've been knowing each other for almost 10 years. Yeah, thanks, Julie. Julie, I carry love. Paula, uh, biker, artistic biker, uh, Blade. Uh, Vicky in New Orleans. <laughs> uh, who else? Yeah. So there's some that we've known each other for, you know, we've known each other for nine, 10 years. And then of course, a lot of y'all, you know, for the past six years over here on YouTube, let's see. Um, oh yeah. Uh, Donna says she found me while I was outside. I used to do, uh, I called it driveway art and I would set up and it's a lot of work to set up outside. Uh, the camera, the laptop. I mean, I guess, you know, now with the phones, I, I didn't even have a, 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 a smartphone or iPhone when I first started. All my photography, everything was done with a big, one of the big 10 cameras, right? So, um, you know, when I was doing the driveway art, I'd set up, I'd get the, the uh, patio, the umbrella. I'd have to, you know, get extension cords and make sure I was close enough to the house for the Wi-Fi and set up the camera and everything under an umbrella. And I would do driveway art. 
And what that was, was I would roll out huge sheets of paper, roll them out down the driveway, and I'd splatter paint or and do all kinds of driveway art, and then I'd cut it up and give it away. <laughs> And it was like, I would just work out there on the driveway for an hour, however long. Now, those videos were on Ustream, so they're not even on YouTube, because I've only been uploading to YouTube for six years, but I've been streaming for almost 10. So let's see what else is going on. Yeah, it was a best. It was fun. And uh, let's see. Uh, hi, Faithful Mess. We're just mentioning you a minute ago. So uh, if y'all don't follow Faithful Mess, Di Packer, well, she's not Packer Dye anymore. Diane, right there, you see her, Diane. Uh, Faithful Mess, I'm trying to see who else streams. Uh, make sure y'all follow everybody, at least to go check out their YouTube channels and see if it's something you'd like. Um, I very rarely get to make too many live streams, but I do go and watch recordings. Now, sometimes I scrub through them. You know, someone's using a heat gun for five minutes. And if, you, if I'm using a heat gun for five minutes, scrub on past that on my my show too, you know. But uh, yeah, so, but I do try to get through a lot of y'all's videos. And I hope, you know, and I'm glad that you're here watching mine. So let's see, what else is going on? Is there anything else y'all want to talk about? See? show and tell. I'm looking around the room, see if there's anything else we can discuss. Again, this is what I'm going to work in probably later today. I'm going to work in, in uh, putting my stuff in my Jana, my uh, Jane Jana journal here. And then again, I'll be working in doing my little thought, big idea kind of thing. This girl's going to go on here. This is one of the girls that, uh, let me just, while I'm sitting here, let me cut her out. Uh, this came in one of the, in the kit that John has sent me. Again, don't forget to go follow Preppy Crafty Girl. Follow her, her YouTube channel and her Etsy shop. If you like vintage kits, if you like art journaling and vintage kits, then follow her. I'm, I'm leaving kind of like the white edge around her. Um, she has awesome vintage kits. And if y'all have somebody you want to promote or you watch that maybe I don't watch. If you have somebody that you want to talk about that if you think I don't watch them or don't know about them, let me know. Put it in the comments because I will go check out new uh, I will go check out new um, videos and new YouTubers. Just like, you know, sometimes the comic book guys stop in here and I try to shout them out in their channels because uh, I do like to promote the comic book community as well that are making independent comic books because their artist, their art is awesome and amazing. And I don't do comic art. I don't do sequential art, but I love, I love the art. So I promote it and watch it and enjoy it, but I don't make it. But that's okay. You don't have to make everything to enjoy it. There's some oil painters I like too, but I will I ever oil paint again? I never say never, but probably never. But, you know, bye, Gail. Um, so if there's anybody y'all want to shout out, Christine, she has a, her own line of color books, as does Laura Lou. Laura Colors too. I call her Laura Lou. They both have their own color book line on Amazon. If you want to support um, artists at this time, it's probably a good way to support artists is by buying their books that they sell on Amazon because that's a way they can make some money during this um, freedom, loss of freedom time. <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm going to put her here. So I'll put, I just like her there. I had no plans, <laughs> but, uh, and I'll just use a glue stick here and I'm just going to glue her down. Hi, Carla. Let's see who else am I missing? Hi, Abstract. Who else am I missing? Yeah, that's Faith. Yeah. Faith uh, usually streams with Mark. And uh, again, I only got through half of Mark's show when he's making those cards. Uh, I shouted Mark out earlier, so if you don't follow him, he was he. I don't know if he's still here or not. Ian, if y'all see Ian here, Ian's one of the mods. He is an awesome artist. 
uh, in the UK. So if you want to follow an awesome painter, watercolorist, he does acrylic and other things too. His watercolors are my favorite, but you know, everybody has their favorite. Um, so I'm going to glue her right there. Doesn't she look good there? Yes, I know, right? It just, you know, because she was so tall, I thought it would be good on this signature of Little Thoughts, Big Ideas. And again, I, if y'all missed at the beginning when I was talking about these, they're just big pieces of, you know, big, you can use, um, what do you call it? Poster board. Just use poster board, fold it in half. Or if it's way too big, you might want to, you know, fold it and then maybe have a flap or something if it's way too big. But I just made some signatures. There's only like five sheets in each one. And it's going to be like where if I just want to do a little something, something, I don't even have something right here to do. But because um, she turned out really big. But uh, if you just have any little idea, little thought, just a little something that you like or want to collect or glue down, you know, you could do it. In, and the, again, this is a good one for kids or grandkids that are stuck at home. Give them some big sheets of paper and tell them just to draw little things all over it or write little things. Or, you know, they're, they're probably not going to be into quotes, but they could tell them to draw a manga face and maybe have a manga face here, a scene right here, their name up here. You could practice your, uh, let me find my pen again. Let me get my, you know, you can uh, tell them to practice their names. Now, when I write like this with these brush lettering type things, this is not how I write, uh, except for maybe some, uh, what do you call it, uh, titles, you know. But, uh, you know, they can practice their, it, depending on their age, you know, they can practice their alphabets and they could, you can uh, draw, maybe draw a big letter form, like draw a big A, B or C, or they could draw it and then let them decorate it. Let them decorate, like fill it in doodle inside of it like give them a big a with open space and let them doodle in it you know or you could do the same thing and janet and i about two three years ago we were going to do a lot of brush lettering that was our plan i think you know we went to jet pens and ordered all kinds of stuff <laughs> And uh, so anyway, started buying brush pins, but you don't have to have a brush pin or a food a. You can do you can do the same kind of thing with um let me do a pink one and let me do a green one. You can do it with uh, super tips. Okay. You just is it has, you have to have a little bit more control. I don't know how this is going to be very dark, but you can do um Because you can get different pressure with the um, super tips. That's kind of, let me do it. Now that green's probably going to be, let me get a darker green. So, you know, you can practice. You just have all kinds of fun on a big sheet of paper. Uh, what size paper is this? I don't know. Let me uh, let me measure one because it's just a big sheet of paper cut in half. Let me get a ruler. Let me get a ruler, Eileen. It is uh, 14 and a half by 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I, I, I cut it down myself from even a bigger. She says about 15 by 21 thereabouts but you can make them any size you want if you get a bit piece of poster board get a piece of poster board you can cut it down whatever size you want right and then just use it to doodle on you get an idea that's why i said little thoughts big ideas you know this is just some of our of our inks here that we got when they were clearanced out for a dollar whatever and i just went and let me just go over here to um uh, let's go right here and um, I just took a piece of plastic 
just put one little drop. That's all you need. Like one little drop there. And your, where's my water? Here it is. Do a little spritz like that. And then just start, you know, kind of smearing. It's kind of like smack and dragon, but instead of taking the paper to the big sheet of craft mat, just kind of put it on there. Then I had another little one for the pink here. So let's put a little drop of pink. Just a little bit of water. That's probably way too much. Anyway. You know, like that. Then you can take, you could put a little bit of some, just a drop in a little thing, put a little water in there, take a brush, do a little splat. And then when this is dry, then you can go in here and write some notes. Write some things or doodle or draw. You know, you just just try things. Just try things. <laughs> okay, well, uh, unless y'all got some more something idea of, of what you want to do or see. Is there anything? Yeah, smack a lackin'. Yeah, <laughs> there we go, Annette. I got that's gotta go in the wing nut book. Instead of smack and dragon, like with the big sheet, a smaller version. Smack a smack, smack and lack, smack a lacking because it's little. Whoops, smack a lacking, Annette. That'll have to go in the wing nut book, Annette. You made the wing nut book. Let me show you what that is. So that's another journal. <laughs> It's a little book of quips, quotes, and crazy things that we say on the show. And I just write it down. So like, just like that, smack a whack and a net. And I will say this. Let me go ahead and say in quote, in um, parentheses, a small version of smack and dragon. Okay. So that's a small. And so then just pull that off and it goes anywhere in the middle of this book. Got hundreds of things in here. And if you ever went through like Denise one time when she was here, she goes, well, let's read some of those. I go, Denise, you're not going to understand any of them. They're not going to make any sense. <laughs> because it's just what happens. You have It's one of those you have to be there. Julie said. The rarely sung, or the, rare, the rarely sung North American. Oh, the, no, that's supposed to be seen. Wait a minute, I couldn't read my own writing. The rarely seen North American bear cow. See, it doesn't make any sense. You have to have been there. You have to have been there to have that make. Pacola is your, Pacola is our trapper keeper. Now that one does kind of make sense. Kimberly557 said that. Pacola is your trapper keeper. <laughs> <laughs> if y'all know the mod Pacola, she is like awesome mod. Okay, let's see. Here's one from uh, Jean, Sassy Pants Jean. Sometimes we actually go down rabbit holes to meerkat tunnels. <laughs> we go down the rabbit hole to meerkat tunnels. See, they're just all kinds of things. Eileen said, Janet must be water and I am pigment because I follow her everywhere. Or as Janet says, opposite. <laughs> I don't even know what that. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so it's just a full, and they're stacked up five deep on every page. But that's our, and it's a wing nut book because we're all a bunch of wing nuts. It's one of uh, Tim Holtz's little wing nut books, right? <laughs> Uh -huh. Oh, my God. Okay. okay. Well, I don't know. I don't know what else to say or do today. If y'all have something else you want to say or do. You really make any sense, Julie. Oh, I'm looking around, seeing if there's uh, anything else to inspire you 
to inspire you? What else would y'all like to be inspired with? Anything? Anything to inspire you guys? <clears throat> I'll wait just a minute. It's only a little after 11. I, I usually try to go till, you know, 1130 or, you know, so, you know. You have a fountain pen question. I don't really use fountain pens, Shelly. The person who asks fountain pens is Janet. And Janet comes on at 1. So if you want fountain pen questions answered, I use calligraphy dip pens, not really fountain pens. I have a, I have a couple calligraphy fountain pens, but I don't really use them. So if you're talking about the nice, fancy fountain pens, Janet is your girl. Um, you have a question on Bible journaling. Uh, Julie, what's your question? What's your question, Julie? Uh, Kelly, Dee, could you please tell me how to take the riv rivets out of three ring? Um, yeah, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to take a three the rivets out of a three ring binder. Yeah, I'd probably find some other alternate solution to make my own ring binder, like with the, uh, the, the rings themselves. I don't know how to take the rivets out of a ring binder. New tools. I don't have any new tools, Ian. All my tools are my trusty old tools. Do you want to see some tools? I'll show you some tools. You want to see tools? Yeah, Shell. Yeah, ask Janet. Yeah, on, on uh, that. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, Devin, if it's about how to take a binder, um, the rivet out, I don't know. Yeah, I always show y'all all the time what I'm working on. I just showed you those two little... Um, I showed you those two little journals. I'm working on two dog commissions. I'm almost done with one. Let's see. My favorite is your shows. The one where you sketch and draw. Yeah, the, I love doing those are my one of some of my favorites to do. Collage, Christine collage. I do like doing color books too, but I like doing collage and where I just draw animals for you guys. Um do you ever use coloring pics? Yeah, um, Donna, I have a, uh, one of my journals is that. Let me see if I can find which one where I have used. Which one is it here? Hang on, I'm digging. Where I have used, let me move this is wet. So let me, let's move this. This is wet. This journal, I've used uh, coloring book pages. Every time I post, I, I get grief from people for, yeah, you got to get, yeah. Um, here's my thing on the Bible journaling, Julie Topaz. Um, my Bible journaling is a Bible, it's made for journaling. <laughs> it's it's made for it, but, uh, but uh, I understand some people don't think you should write in a Bible. Uh, you know, that's, they can have their opinion. It's not going to stop me from working in my Bible journaling. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, okay, I don't see anything else in caps, but let me see. Like, all right, here. The, these are cut out. These are co color them first. Color them, cut them out, and then glue them in. Do not try to uh, glue in blank, uncolored pages because, especially if you have any kind of um pages that are crunchy if you glued her in first and then tried to color her with color pencils you're going to make a texture you know just like you do a rubbing you know like you do a rubbing um this is from a color book not all of this is these giraffes are from a color book so yeah, you can use elements of a color book. Now I'm going to say that the these kind of things that I cut out of color books are not out of my $25, $35, $45 color books. These are out of like Create Space $2.99 color books. Okay, I'm not cutting up my Maria Troll, my Hannah Carl's on. I'm not cutting up those. Okay, these are the one-sided, inexpensive create space or um, creative haven, creative haven type color books that you can um, cut out. Um, 
how do you clean the palette if it's dry? You don't. Um, I use coffee lids for palettes. Let me find one here. Let me reach over here. Uh, if you're just using, I just use coffee lids. Uh, when the acrylic paint dries, if it's all, if you if it's dried, I just put more paint on it. But if it's, you know, you can actually peel this up. You can actually peel this off. Some people like the paint skins and they do stuff with them. I don't I don't do anything with them, but you can just peel it off like that. Or I use these little um, Simply Cranberry lids for small bits of paint. Um, I do have this tray that I have my Jane Davenport paint. It's it's it doesn't come. It's it. This does not come off. If it's, it, I might be able to peel it off, but once acrylic paint dries, it's not like watercolor where you can get it. You know, do you please stand back, start back on abandoned books? I know there's so many projects, right? The stray that strange as lots of the old texts have additions. I don't know what must have missed part of that comment about old text i don't know about the old text well here i'll they're still talking about the bible journey here i'll show you i'll show you. so the, let me let me finish showing you this real quick so there's parts in this that are this is color book pages or elements elements from the pages right um so i this journal and this one's old too and then of course we do have the napkin journal i'll try to get through these hang on in the napkin journal i use as a base i use decorative napkins decorative napkins as the base and then these are color book page elements so again oh i missed something on the bible in oh, let's see can you remove all paints um I'll see old texts have addition signed commentaries. Yeah. Well, here's the thing, Ian. Most people that do Bible journaling have specific Bibles for that that have wide margins. Not everybody, but there are Bibles out there made. They're made for Bible journaling that have, hang on. Like this one's the illustrated Bible from um, Day Spring. It's got, let me find a page, look. It's, look at all this space. <laughs> I underline what I'm, uh, I'm talking, you know, what I'm addressing. But look, you can, you can read it just fine. But this is not the Bible that I read and study, really. This is my, this is made for Bible journaling. Okay, it's made for this. This is, <laughs> you know, so, and I have pictures of this on my Facebook. I don't really show it and talk about it. I'm not, I don't want to get people all, all jacked up <laughs> over religion. You know, we know how that goes. Well, I know how it goes. I've been on chat rooms and uh, religious political chat rooms for almost 30 years. I know how it can get. So I usually try not to discuss, you know, politics, religion, or the virus on my channel. <laughs> but as you can see, look, look how much space there is. You see? Yeah. And I've got one of those too, uh, uh, Jay Weber. I have the coloring Bible. There are Bibles made for coloring in. Hang on. Let me get that one. Hang on. <clears throat> All right, I'll show you those in a second. So you can see there's plenty of space to journal. Okay. And this is a big thick, this is not something you carry to church, people. This is made, <laughs> this is made for you to do Bible journey. Look at it. It's, it probably weighs 10 pounds. No, I don't know how much it weighs. But it's, it's, you don't carry this around. This is just made for journaling, meditating, pondering, arting, 
concentrating. That's all that, you know, in here. Okay. That's not my carry around. But there's other ones that you can use to color in. This was my first one to, that I got uh, for uh, journaling in. And it just has wide margin. So there's wide margins in this one, like with lines. There's like lines for you to, to journal on the sides of it. Then there's coloring ones. This one, which also has vellum sheets. This one is stunning. Large print version. There's also a small print version of this. And it has all kinds of pages for you to color. And I have, there's all my notes. Let's see, you can see this is <laughs> all my study, my notes. But anyway, um, there's pages in here that are vellum. Like this. See, every few pages. There's vellum. Isn't that beautiful? Let me see. Let me find another vellum sheet. This one. And then every so often, there's things for you to color in the margins. Like this. See, they've already got it printed out. You don't, <laughs> don't, have, to, you don't like to color, then you don't, you know, this is just not your thing. Not everybody likes to color. Like this, see? It's already printed in there. So there's different kinds, and there's all kinds of coloring Bibles. Journaling Bibles, coloring Bibles. This one's just a journaling one where you just write your own. This one has uh, printed stuff and vellum that you can color in. And then the big one, you do whatever you want in that. You have the Inspire? Yeah, it's, it is stunning, isn't it, with all the vellum? Uh, yeah, thin paper, Ian. It's not like, it's not goat skin, Ian. It's vellum paper. <laughs> Ian's back to the Gutenberg or something here. <laughs> but if you ever get a chance, if you're ever at a museum and you ever get to see, uh, like we got a chance to see some of the original um uh, well, I don't say original, the the actual, the, the actual um, prayer books and Bibles from like 1200, 1100, you know, and everything is all, I mean, and the, the illuminate, illuminated lettering with the gold, it just like glows. It just like glows off the page. Yeah, just Google uh, cut, or... Or go to Dayspring or uh, it, look up Illustrated Bible and just Google it. Yeah, Donna, you'll find tons. You'll find tons. Um, it, it, you know, there's, there's, journal, there's journaling Bibles, which just have the margin with, you know, lines for you to journal. And then there's coloring Bibles that in the margins, they have flowers and, you know, outlined words that you color yourself. Um, let's see. Hi, Wolfie. And so anyway, back to the napkin journal. This one has, these are all color book images on top of decorative napkins. And so I call this my napkin journal because it starts out, let me find it here. Like this is a napkin. This is a decorative napkin, right? Textured and like this one. And then what I'll do is I will take, yeah, I know what you're thinking of, Ian. Yeah, and if you've ever done any professional calligraphy or studied any calligraphy books or old calligraphy or old Bibles, then I totally understand what you're saying. But that's not what's in these modern day ones, Ian. <laughs> So this is, <laughs> I think you're awesome, Ian. Uh, so anyway, this is um, a decorative napkin. And then what I do is I'll take color book images like these. Okay. And then, and I always credit, I can't think of her name right now, but I use the, her books all the time, this girl. Um, one of you probably know right off the bat. But anyway, I always credit her anytime we do one of these. 
And uh, so then you color and paint them or whatever, and then you cut them out and glue them on. But this is all painted. All the backgrounds are painted in, like here. It's all painted in. Juliet Crane. Thank you, Devin. Juliet Crane. Uh, Juliet Crane, I have her uh, her little magical, not magical, what is it? Anyway, her little animals and her people. And, um, and she thought she got a big charge out of us using her books for this. Because I, I always tag. So I tagged her on Instagram and she liked she liked the stuff. How many journals do you have? Um, <laughs> you oh, all different process. Oh, I don't I showed um, I guess you weren't here. I did show where's my phone? Uh, I did take a quick picture of a couple of my shelves. I don't I don't I can't even begin to count them. But here's a couple. There's here's one. This one's that's all my journals. Well, no, it's not all my journals, but those are, these are all art journals, as are these up here on the top shelf up there. That's all art journals. Plus, I have that many more on this side of the room. I don't know how many. Plus, I have my 15 or 20 uh, altered abandoned books and my four or five dilutions. Those aren't even in those pictures. My di dilutions books, my napkin journals, those aren't these pictures. All my color books. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah. Let me find a couple more done pages. There's one. And we haven't worked in, in the napkin journal in a while. This one has a lot of stick. I think it was, I think it had 2009 on there, but I never used dated books, so I just covered up the year. <laughs> I turned it into a napkin journal. So, well, I guess I'm gonna head out, guys. Hopefully, hopefully y'all got some inspiration, some ideas, some techniques, some ideas from Sister Woman John on her vintage. What else? <laughs> little um making up our own little travelers so you can't say you didn't get some kind of idea here today so oh thank you pecola yeah that was a recent how many ways to collage yeah and guys look at my playlist i have uh over a thousand videos I have something like 1,500. I think I'm down to 1,100 now because I put about 200 or 300 on private because of the, this was made, this wasn't made for kids, you know, kind of thing. So, but I still have, I think, 1,100 videos and 14 to 16 playlists. I try to divide everything up in playlists to make it easier to find. So if you want to find collage, mixed media, uh, pet portraits, people portraits, painting, you know, whatever we do, journaling, whatever we do, abandoned, altered, whatever kind of things we do. I have a playlist for almost all of it. So don't forget Janet comes on at one.